Perhaps in have a meeting with NXA at Kesako. I don't the day or yesterday, though, I hear go in Hodo a city out at a Tatasha at the local level. But the Russian day to the husband today, they listen to Kota Tatasha Nareda. There's an area in Manama Valley called Douglas Mesa. Right on top of Douglas Mesa, there's an elder that lives up there. So, I think you can't. Out on the inside, the, the, the shade house, she has a low tent. Utah They're building um, a 16 by 24 um, a little tiny house. So within three days, within three days, as Conil said, so yesterday, yeah, they were doing the the the, the, the sidings on the outside. I don't know, inside of the red um, installation. She brought the in day, maybe I don't know, they put a, a wood stove in there for her. I don't know another the bathroom, but yeah, they live. So this is like in within four days. Oh, I don't can I don't know if today, yeah, they're putting on pro panels. They'll go on the roof and give some basic part of the mess. Hey, they get a course, yeah, they let her. Hopefully, by the end of uh, this week, Friday, she should be living in there. So this is like within several days, can they sit? I appreciate what the Utah Navajo Health System is doing on the helping our Navajo people at the local level. So it is at over by getting his name for that. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Daniels, uh, you said the committee appreciates the work that you do for your communities. But out in the Ban Banjo, Rado Banjo, Atobaya, just get to the Nessa Hinjil Eco. You always say in your words, Honorable Daniels, it's just not on the state at the Nessa. I need them. I agree with you. Kisna and Nisko, what out in the bounds, a case of a patinchetto, Satoba. Beyond the shimpe that a tida, ne, what a ne, your jump, no, a nippon silk, by a chest tisilla. When you sent those pictures, my family was heartbroken to see Grandma sitting in the midst of what she was sitting in with a tent inside her, her house as a dilapidated house. I see a hajopa and then get a hidden essa kid a hat on. We need to really have and encourage NHA to assist with people. And also, this morning's email also, Charles Noon, it deserves attention, and we should have a meeting with NHA or during the agenda approval, we can add NHA to provide a report on what they can do because lately, within the past year almost, we've been working really well with NHA and they're trying to do something with some of the money that they have and how emergency assistance can go out to people like that. That's cause got its call right now and people need help you know, throughout the nation and we can talk about it. We can add that to the agenda under um, reports. And uh, if you want to do that during that time, you're welcome to do so. So, uh, any other announcements? 
Chairman Freeland. Uh, Honorable Freeland, welcome. Appreciate you being Thank on you, the Chairman. call with us. You have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I appreciate um, Shanatai, um, Shanai, Honorable Herman Daniels for the prayer. Auto, um, good morning to colleagues on San Diego staff as well. Um, Chairman, I'm going to be asked to be excused for about an hour. Um, I'm attending a, a funeral service, unfortunately, this morning um, for an extended family member. So I'm going to be here doing that, and I'll jump back on the call as soon as I get done with the service. But just wanted to let you know and give you a heads up, Shanata, Chairman. If that's okay. Um, thank you, Honorable Freeland. And since you're on the call with us right now, Honorable Freeland, the committee appreciates the work that you've done. I know throughout the winters, the past four years, you have been hauling firewood for the York chapters in that area. Honorable Freeland, for you coordinating uh, wood hauling for people that are less fortunate, people that don't have vehicles that can't even haul wood. Honorable Freeland, and you're excused. And uh, some would always say it's better to be in the house of mourning than to be in the house of feasting. Honorable Freeland, so you're excused and come back on the call and we'll continue our meeting. Thank you. Uh, Chairman. Uh, thank you. Uh, and God bless each and every one of you, Shanata. Uh, uh, committee members and staff, thank you. I'll jump back on the call pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you. We're on announcements. Honorable Kiel and Begay Jr. Honorable Begay. Uh, Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Chairman, hey, uh, this coming Friday, oh, not today, excuse me, so yet. Um, I don't, good morning, everyone, uh, RDC members and everyone on the line. Uh, Arizona Department of Transportation Board uh, meeting that I say, uh at the uh, uh, Trinity Unified School District Board, board Boardroom day. Um, this is their, um, I guess, uh, their last, obviously, uh, of, uh, their last uh, board meeting. Coco, you know, our own Navajo person, uh, Mr. Um, Jesse Thompson, is, is chair, chairs the uh, board uh, uh, meeting. That I say, Coco, I did send uh, an email to you. Um, and and then uh, others. Um, a for the uh, state right of way that that is in the kitchen. That all the it after this tomorrow afternoon in the mini farm uh, because I've been advocating uh, for the uh, improvement of our uh, uh, state right of way. Uh, Mostly on the central part of the uh, Navajo Nation, uh, I guess uh, if you guys can attend a, a, a short session uh, tomorrow evening at, at Wind Farms uh, Senior Center. Auto uh, for those that can make public comment, uh, they can submit their uh, statement to the Arizona Department of Transportation Board website. Koko, uh, like 264, 160, 191, all these state roads uh, you can address if they have any issue uh, to the uh, board and the hot key. So, in uh, Ecuador, not for the excuse, so yeah, uh, Chairman, so I could uh, the Arizona Department of Transportation Board meeting uh, on Friday, 9 o'clock, to uh, Unified School District Board um, Boardroom, I just meeting that I said on this, so I could have seen this, Chairman. Uh, honorable members of RDC, any other announcements? I hear none, but I would like to just uh, recognize Honorable Chair 
Ember Kenneth Bob Crotty. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, Honorable Crotty uh, coordinated indigenous people, our dear Navajo people who are, are missing, some are murdered. And there was a blanket ceremony that was held over at the Navajo Nation Museum. And just to listen to our dear Navajo people who have lost a, lo- a loved one or those that are still missing. It really um, it moves your heart. And I say, uh, advocating on behalf of people, our dear people that are missing and murdered. Because I want to say thank you, and we certainly appreciate the work that you do. We're here to support anytime you need us. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank Go you. Um, she does. I appreciate uh, that recognition and for the support of the 24th uh, Navajo Nation Council to help um, our families look for and recover their missing loved ones. Uh, um, so, say Kia Ani Neslebo, the Lagana Viking people, Basisin, Destiny, Desichedo, the Lagana Irish uh, people, Basanala, say Amber, Kenneth Bakrati. Uh, and uh, for today, committee members, I appreciate um, the discussion, and I'm really interested in the report regarding the Agriculture uh, Investment Fund in terms of how that can support and the intent of the fund to support our local ranchers and farmers. Uh, thank you very much, um, Chair Delegate Nez. I appreciate uh, the invitation for the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable members of RDC, let's move down to number two on the agenda, recognizing guests and visiting officials. We'll have, we'll have introductions for all that are um, with us today. We'll begin with RDC. Honorable uh, Vice Chair Walker, are you on the call? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, uh, Chairman, all committee members, all on the legislative staff. So. I do the different uh, offices, programs, departments, and divisions, and entities and enterprises that are on the call with us, as well as our uh, Navajo people uh, listening uh, public. I do the other colleagues, other colleagues from the 24th Council that are on the call with us. A coho uh introduction gishing clear it in daily home cushing uh not like uh but uh eight uh edibana uh so that's uh co it's easy to see that that the nap it's shingle D A D in the I didn't take I do Bandi Craig it has an about a weed in there. I don't know if you can get your ear cushion, but this is not a barbecue method. Could echo that essence in those ever don't know. They eat it, they they yat, eh? They they eh? They leave that echo, she wins and echo in a as a shat echo introductions as a donor than you can eat. They done that with a shin being told me to the chin, but she's chin or to what's so me. The chay that the Tadishkin is a shinnala. As a Western agency, a ari a the men shido, a chick a dan deni that a could you care? I could echo over Hansen, Ado, a resource development committee, though a vice chairperson should be a dina feda, is a by Hansen shinanda, but a shahadi a. Tho, 
Thank you. Uh, Honorable Kiel and Begay Jr. Chatsala. Chairman, Yatinana, cross that Hanar, he named Sonki, and he ate a Zab, and he does such a Ado, this cheat need us another Ado, five chapters, Banasa game in firms, Nazini, Sadan Fenwood. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Herman Daniels. Uh, thank you, Chair. For those here, I don't know if I'm sitting here, staff. I don't know if I'm here, but I love it. I'm sure my good con. Yes, I don't know if I'm sure I'm not going to be with Herman Daniels Jr., A. Suzy. I don't know. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Daniels. Thank you, Honorable Mark Freeland, if you're still on the call. Honorable Stewart. Yes, Chairman. Good morning. Aranda Vice Chair, Shazayaza Aranda, colleagues of the 24th Nomination Council, Aro RDC members, Loshanaka, Loshanaka, like you had in Pasadena, and this morning, Ako Kodo, and Nidit Shadeji at Wilson C. Stewart Jr., A. and Shado, Kutz of the Inchla, Nan is Edit Kachin, Abashes Chain, Kachin, the Shade, all being appointed to Shanella, Aro Patada Shahi, the Banash, the Shigi, A. at Tell, all the Kel Cheat, once you don't need Jada, K. I think with Dun Ligi. A Banash National for Defiance Agency, out of Defiance Agency, out of representation for the Resource Development Committee of the Tennessee Nomination Council. I don't know if you had on his one thought this morning, out of other colleagues and staff, out of patient agency society, division directors, and also Nagy, chapter officials and chapter staff, community members at Nagy. Thank you, Hat. Awesome, Sir Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Chairman. Share your reckoners and share how much on and slow they touch in Bashish chain, Sana Bishin, the Shichado, Kia Ani, the Shanal, but Ego Ed and then Snado, San Juan Chapter, Holgado, Ene, Hastango Chapters, Manash, Nishigay, Hatsara Khan, San Juan, and Hansa, the old great East Tosakado, East Indeshkis, Yat, Ben Arno, Chokajan, and that's all Gizdo, Koroda is not Sagi, Beshmahas, and Betsana Jak, or Sani, or DC, Kitana. Good morning, Chair, members of RDC. Um, my name is Rodney Tahi. I'm the Legislative Advisor for Resource and Development Committee. I'm Kiaani and Senja Kene. And I want to say thank you to Delegate Daniels for that beautiful prayer. It's a great way to start the day. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Mose. Morning, Chair. Morning, everyone. Shay Leonard Mo is yet twin to the Dana Shah and Alani Bashi's chain. A sheet as you shade out to Banas in a left. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Miss Khan. Oh, good morning, Yad Ed and Ishik A. Yad A Resources and Development Committee members, Dano Shinigi, Ado, um, Yad A Besh Bantasani, Dano Shinigi, um, who are here listening to the call. Ado Yat Eta Isin Sagi staff, though um, Navajo Nation division employees, and those listening to this call today. A Hehat and Sago, Tiaj, Sodas in Behainzi, Epa, Ache and 
powerful, wonderful, wonderful. She a Mariana Khan, does she do me? Don't know, and a shrinky a toy here, dreamy, Nishne. And he bushes chain, last chair, does she chain, ten, and she can a dash and yale. Um, good morning, one and all, and Mr. Chair, and members of the committee, I shall be listening to the call. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Khan. I see her. Bashan, Hebesh, Bahasa, Anan, Lenigi, Koro. Kujenda is Giziki, a large e Kujon Nichente, horses in the Aita, Honorable Chair Amber Kennesbaugh Crotty. She already introduced herself, so we'll go down to Honorable Elmer Begay. Thank you, Mr. Um, they'll get down chairman Nas. I don't know, members at the RDC members so yet a opinion you hit this I don't um I don't know that is I get on the yeah yeah so so yet a so I don't um I don't um sit at you go I don't I don't know instant again not as a couple of hands no put it in the best team I don't in the city I don't last it as another out of the yard or yeah, I don't know. 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 I don't I don't know. 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 Etlego, inch gone nedo, not chin, but nasi, cut or lay to, digin, catch it, bleed or lay to, yo, not chin, son, said Silla, Elmer Begay. The neck a chiant, take a do, the nebeza, do, the nebe, or inchpen and hint, can go yo by head and eat in. A hot ego, eh, the neck ishin and tin billick, a chin leco, eh, lany, et ego, and just case he been a not chin, son, said Silla. Do digin, for long or less, said Silla. Honorable <laughs> Especially <laughs> Again, catch it low in us, the lesson and I'm Leniki. I don't hear our torture, none is in Latin, yoin, no bachin, a bag of Kodoban, Shandlash door, Toshi, a Kurichenta, Nashin, what a Neos Carthus, and I don't hear her. Thank you for your service. Kodo, I got Sitsui, Beshbahasa, Anna, Vice Chair, Honorable Raymond Smith, Jr. Honorable Vice Chair Smith. Good morning, Shiche. Honorable Vice Chair. Thomas Walker, Honorable. Dano Finnegi, Ado Peshma Saan, Dean D, Dean Nenegi. Good morning. Resource Development Committee, though, staff, Dano Finnegi. 
Beautiful morning, nice and cold, snowing. Where's Johnny at? We need these kind of mornings. It's uh, Hayahot, eh? Hey, how Raymond Smith Jr. Shedo, the men shinge, I had the position. It's a chile, the shizze, other honorati, and then again, the shiche. I don't know, eh, the shinana. Vice Chair of the uh, Budget and Finance, eh, Aja, Asatado, the Navajo Land Commission, so I don't cut the shaggy, Nanishigi. My thoughts are the un. Not that they don't can tell us they told. They would out. It does need all. And this is pass on. Not in deep that the energy. I just trust. But in Shredo, the hand hit this little. The yin hit the whole load. The hair not that. Uh, quite a dollar. Okay, Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. I don't dig in the solar or less our creature. No, I shouldn't know. But in care of a shine jet on the shot and the corona shot echo non shins in in like you should be now to listen. Okay, it's true. Okay, not at all less. From the office of the president, vice president, we have uh, Mr. Dave Filford. Good morning, chair and members of the Resource and Development Committee, staff, and all the other delegates that are listening in. Davis Filford from office of the president, vice president, executive staff assistant. I'll be listening in with my colleague, but her microphone doesn't work, so she can hear you, though. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Ms. Klaushen from OPVP. Her microphone is not working. Mr. Tahi. The chairman and Ms. Caution. Yeah, Ms. Yes, Ms. Caution's microphone isn't working on her end, as Mr. Davis Silver pointed out to you, um, pointed out to RDC. So she's on the call, but she she can't talk. Okay. Um, we have from BIA, Ms. Curley. Uh, yeah, Dave Bennett, good morning, uh, RDC chair, RDC members, Shanand uh, Aydanos, any other council delegates, um, I, Cheryl Curley, BIA Navajo Region, uh, Tribal Liaison, Tribal Operations special, Specialist. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Curley, for getting on the call. From DCD, Yellow Yellowman. Dr. Pearl Yellowman. Oh, I gotta go. Okay, all right. Talk to you later, Pearl. All right, later. Good morning, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, we heard your conversation at the end. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to make sure I'm, I'm on the right phone here. Uh, good morning, honorable members of RDC. Um, good morning to all of our staff, um, chapter officials who may be on the call and colleagues on the call. Um, and Shana Delegate Herman Daniels for the prayer this morning. And um, I just, <clears throat> um, DCD, we are on the call. We have a report um, to give this morning and um, we'll be bringing on some staff um, for that report. Um, Aro Nan, I just wanna say thank you to our RDC members um, for working with us. Um, these last years, last four years, 
آرا شی پرل یالمنی انشی آرا شلنگی شی تنا بیتین شن آرا تنا بیت تنا بیتین شن آرا توزه نه باشیش چین and just a quick announcement on on Friday uh, I, I will be turning in my work phone um, but I will be accessible or can still be um, um, contacted through my email, my work email. So this this Friday and then making some temporary delegations um, after this Friday. <clears throat> so I appreciate all of our staff who are on the call and we'll, we'll be on the call to provide our report chair. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yellowman. Mr. Leo Watchman, Department of Agriculture. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Leo Watchman, Department of Agriculture. Thank you, and uh, good morning to all the members of RDC and folks on the call. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Watchman. Mr. Warren Roan, Navajo EPA. Good morning. My name is Warren Roan. I'm the Environmental Department Manager for the Waste Regulatory Compliance Department under NNEPA. Good morning, and thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the Resources Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rowan. Don't be daisy, EPA. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, um, chair members of RDC. I am um, Shelby Daisy. I'm a remedial project manager. I'll be listening in for Navajo EPA. Thank you. We also have a couple of colleagues that joined us. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Okay. Honorable Chairwoman Eugenia Charles Newton. Good morning, RDC committee. Uh, this is Delegate Charles Newton. My clans are Bitasni. I'm born for Ashina. I represent the beautiful community of Shiprock on the 24th Navajo Nation Council and will also be serving as council delegate for Shiprock community on the 25th Navajo Nation Council. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. Welcome to RDC meeting. Yeah. Honorable Nathaniel Brown? None? Anybody on the call that wishes to introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Shana, this is Delegate Brown. Go ahead, Satilla. Oh, yeah, it's Shana. Um, yeah, it's Shik Edo Shidne, Ado Resource and Development. Uh, Beshmasa and Aja and Kenant, uh, Nasot Nasot Hani, Ado, um, Beshin Dade Nishigi to our to our wonderful staff. Ado Shaya, Toba Hanslo, um, Yadeotanakabanshan <laughs> Anybody on the call that wishes to introduce themselves? Yate, 
members of RDC. This is Nicholas Taylor, CEO of Navajo Nation Shopping Centers. I say good morning to the meeting participants and meeting listeners. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, good morning. This is Joaquin Yates with the Office of the Speaker. Uh, good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Vice Chairman and other members of the Resources and Development Committee and all Navajo Nation staff on the call. Um, I'm here. Thank you. Next. Yad A. Bene Sinai, Idaho Resource and Development Committee. Melvin Harrison, um, LDA for uh, Delegate, uh, Honorable Delegate Carl Slater. So I'll be on the call. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrison, for being on the call. Next. Yes, good morning. This is uh, Raymond Nopa with Navajo Nation Shopping Centers. Uh, I'm a you know, general manager for the Navajo Nation Shopping Center. I uh, just want to introduce myself. Uh, to the committee, and good morning to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nopal. Next. I uh, hear none. Mr. Tahi, could you read the agenda for us, sir? Chair members of RDC, this is the proposed agenda. Resource and Development Committee of the 24th Navajo Nation Council, regular meeting, Wednesday, December 14th, 2022, 10 a.m. Presiding, Honorable Ricky Nez, Chairperson, Honorable Thomas Walker, Jr., Vice Chairperson, Location via Telecommunication. One, call meeting to order, roll call, invocation announcements. Two, recognizing guests and visiting officials. Three, reviewing and approving the agenda. Four, reviewing and approving the journals. November 30th, 2022, regular meeting. Five, receiving reports. Update report by the Department of Agriculture, Division of Community Development and Office of the Controller on the Agriculture Infrastructure Fund, balance expenditure and hay purchase for Navajo chapters. B, update report from the Navajo Environmental Protection Agency on the public comment period regarding the Cypress Amex Minerals Company and Weston Nuclear Inc. consent decree with the United States government and Navajo Nation on the investigation and cleanup of 94 mine sites. Six, old business, none. Seven, new business, legislation number 0232-22, an action relating to the resource and development, budget and finance and update committees, and to the Navajo Nation Council approving, approving $17,513,187 from the Sisasan Fund from the Navajo Nation Shopping Center Inc. for NNSCIS proposed expansion of the Delcon Shopping Center, approving the related expenditure plan. Sponsor, Honorable Elmer P. Begay. Legislation B, legislation number 0233-22 an action relating to the resource and development, budget and finance, and advocate committees, and to the Navajo Nation Council, approving 65000 from the Sisasan Fund for the, the demolition and cleanup of the, the former Smith's Cafe business site under the Chinle RBDO, approving the related expenditure plan, sponsor Honorable Eugene So. C, legislation number 0236-22, an act relating to resource and development, law and order, budget and finance, and advocate committees, and the Navajo Nation Council. Allocating 900000 for the tourism fund to the tourism department for its personnel and operating expenses for FY 2023, amending it 24 NNC section 741 to allow revenue in the tourism fund to be used by all programs for tourism related purposes, resending resolution number CS 45 22, sponsor Honorable Eugenia Charles New and co sponsor Honorable Otto So. D, legislation number 0237-22, an action relating to resource and development committee, approving the plan of operation for the Navajo Nation Broadband Office within the office of the president and vice president. Sponsor, Honorable Carl R. Slater, co-sponsor, Honorable Otto So. E, legislation number 0238-22, an action relating to resource and development, budget and finance, and navigate committees, and to the Navajo Nation Council, approving $1,875,231 from the unreserved, undesignated fund balance 
to replenish the 110 chapters emergency funds accounts, waiving 12 NNC section 8200. Sponsor, Honorable Eugene So. Co-sponsor, Honorable Daniel Eso. F, legislation number 0248-22, an action relating to resource and development and budget and finance, approving a change to CAP-35-18 by reallocating leftovers funds from the Not at Il Shopping Center project to projects in the Hulk Loop and Clagato chapter, sponsor Honorable Raymond Smith. G, legislation 0244-22, an action relating to resource and development and budget finance committee, approving a change in CAP-35-18 by relocating leftover funds from the not Ilsa chapter shopping center project to new chapters in Hoke, Loop, and Clagato chapter sponsor, Honorable Jamie Henyu, co-sponsor, Honorable Carl Slater. Eight, the close of meeting announcements and adjournments. Chair members of RDC, that is proposed agenda read into the record. Back to Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tai, for reading the agenda into the record. Honorable members of RDC, let's establish a motion and a second. Motion, Kayon. Thank you, Honorable Begay. Second by. Chairman, I'll second that. Thank you, Honorable Vice Chair Walker, for that. Um, before we Move down, uh, Mr. Tai. Could you send the call in information to our Honorable Eugene So from Chinley? He's trying to call in, but uh, if you would send him the call in number to RDC. Thank you. Chairman will do. Thank you. Honorable members of RDC, any comments or questions on the agenda? Mr. Chairman. Chair, this is. Um, Honorable Daniels. Mr. Chair, uh, thank you very much for the chat. I thought the tour operators, I thought the banana city, and I thought the Abbey again that the Kri. I don't know about the least the tour drivers than the. I don't know if I a horseback riding business. I don't know if I can get a So every year they purchase their tour permits from a parks and recreation. So I don't know if I can get a lot of money. I don't know if I get a lot of It's way, way, way too high. So eighty could on the um that's a big um our our next meeting is that's a big and so you have a bond that's case but all them Mr. Chair them to to have a meeting with them parks and recreation. So eighty could um regarding the 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 tour permit fee, the annual fee eighty gi go yin yet and then you see the way them um tourists Tour business, the way tours, tours again. Yeah, it hasn't been, it hasn't picked up yet, yeah, because of the pandemic. So AD, I don't. Another thing is, um, um, I know that um, uh, RDC, but on the way we went out to Shanto. Um, this was like, um, uh, it's, it's been a while. We met with um, um, never, never you to NTUA, yeah, NTUA, and also Shanto chapter. Regarding the narrate um, elect, um, the capacity here and narrate um, electricity, narrate Longhouse Valley substation bond in Ecuador, because there's going to be more developments in, in that area. Narrate Western Agency and also narrate um, other other areas. Narrate delegate the um, yellow hair but area to the economic development. Yeah, yeah, that's taking but the capacity electric capacity is not there. So they took a lot more time that they had the net. They need um, power. I saw in Asia, I don't know, other areas, other chapters, other communities in Western and also Queensland, Central, Shishin. So, so AD could not wait. Um, 
Thank you, Honorable Daniels. Mr. Tahi, if you would add these two items to the next RDC agenda. One is the tour operators, uh, tour permit annual fees that they would like to discuss with Parks and Rec's uh, department and perhaps contact Mr. Martin Begay on that. Honorable Daniels, do you want a meeting with them or do you want a report from Martin Begay? Um, Mr. Chair, um, it's, um, it's just not Monument Valley, but there's other areas at the Lope Canyon, there's Canyon de Shea as a tour. Yes, JK. So I would um, recommend that we have a meeting with, with, with him, and perhaps um, have um, tour operators call in the Leho Zabiga. So, so I don't have a hospital. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Mr. Tai, if you would schedule a, a leadership meeting to be added on to the next agenda for RDC, would appreciate that. The other one is uh, what um, Honorable Daniels had uh, sent out in his email the concerns over a uh, uh, Shanto chapter and NTUA substation and how they would like to have um, an additional e electrical capacity in that area. So if you would add that to the next RDC agenda, Mr. Tai. Hey, Chairman Murray for RDC, I made a note of that and it'll be on next week's agenda for approval. Thank you. So um, any other comments or questions? Chairman? Mr. Tahi, you have the floor. Uh, yes, Chairman, we would need to amend the, the agenda for RDC on letter G on page three of four. It should read legislation number 0244, an action relating to resource and development, endorsing the plan of operation of the Western Navajo Agency Council. Sponsor, Honorable Jamie Hengyu and co-sponsor, Carl R. Slater. What is list, currently listed on the agenda is a mistake on my behalf. Second, Chair, is legislation number 0241-2 has been reassigned and is ready for action by RDC. We can add this to the agenda as Mr. Chairman Jamie Hengyu is on the call. The memo was sent out this morning, and I sent it out also to RDC members. For the record for RDC and those listening, it's a memorandum to Manuel Rico, Executive Director of Office of Legislative Services, signed by Otto So, Speaker of the 24 Navajo Nation Council, dated December 14, 2022. Subject, reassignment of legislation number 02141-22, pursuant to Authorities outlined in 2NNC section 164.6, I am re-signing legislation number 0241-2 as follows. One, Resource and Development Committee. Two, Budget and Finance Committee. Three, NUPGATE Committee. And four, Navajo Nation Council. If you have any questions, please contact the Office of the Speaker at 928-871-7160. Thank you. So, Chair Members of RDC, this legislation can be added to the agenda. Back to you, Chairman. Okay, which legislation did you mention first, Mr. Tahi? Uh, Chair, members of RDC, the first legislation that needs to be corrected is G, legislation 0244-22. It should read, an action relating to resource and development, endorsing the plan of operation for the Western Navajo Agency Council. The title that is currently on the proposed agenda is incorrect. The second legislation is legislation 0241-22. The title of the resolution is 
and action relating to resource and development and navigate committees and the Navajo Nation Council approving the purchase of property known as the Chaves Ranch, consisting of 6,349 acres, more or less, located near Tohajale, Navajo Nation, waiving 16 NNC sections 3 through 5 RDCO 78 16 and the Navajo Nation Land Acquisition Rules and Regulations, approving the expenditure of the Navajo Nation Land Acquisition Trust Fund for the purchase of the Chaves Ranch property. Chair members of RDC, that is the legislation that is read for, for your record. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Cahey. Honorable members of RDC, let's have a motion and a second for amendment one. Chairman, motion, Stewart. Thank you, Honorable Stewart. Chair, a second. Thank you, Daniel. Honorable Daniels, thank you. Any comments or questions on Amendment 1? I hear none. Honorable members of RDC, we'll go ahead and put it to a vote. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? Chairman, I vote green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Begay. Yeah, I'm with Green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Daniels. Honorable Green. Thank you. Honorable Freeland's excused for an hour. Honorable Stewart. Green. Thank you. We have a vote of four in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Motion carries on. Amendment one back to the main motion. And uh, any comments or questions? I hear none. We'll go ahead and call for the vote. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? Chairman, I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Begay? Uh, Kellen votes green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Daniels? Green. Thank you. Honorable Freeland is excused. Honorable Stewart. Green. Thank you. We have a vote of four in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Motion carries. We have an approved agenda before us with um, one amendment, which is to add 0244-22 and change the language on 0241-22. Mr. Tai, if you would uh, send us the amended agenda, we would appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. Chair, this is Mariana Kahn. Uh, Ms. Kahn? Uh, I don't know if I missed it, but I do believe that vote was just for Amendment 1 and not for the whole agenda, unless you... Um, I, I could have missed it, but that was my understanding. I don't know if that's what Mr. Tahi's understanding is. Um, Mr. Chair, thank you. Mr. Tahi? Uh, Ms. Khan, Amendment 1 did pass a four, 4 to 1, Chair not voting. The agenda was approved with the amendment with 4 to 1 as well. Back to you, Chairman. Uh, thank you. Um, so we do have an, an approved agenda before us. The votes were four in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting on amendment one. And back to the main motion, the votes was four in favor, zero opposed, and chair not voting. Thank you. Moving down to number four, reviewing and approving journals from November 3, 30. 2022. Have a motion and a second. Sananda. Chairman, I motion. Thank you. 
there a second? Sure, this is Daniels. I'll go ahead and second the motion. Thank you, Honorable Daniels. Any comments or questions on the journals? I hear none. We'll go ahead and call for the vote. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Begay? Chairman Kelly, which green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Daniels? Green. Thank you. Honorable Freeland is excused. Honorable Stewart? Green, Chairman. Thank you. We have a vote of four in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Motion carries on approving the journal from November 30th, 2022. Thank you. Okay, it's Number five on the agenda, receiving reports. First on the list is A, update report by the Department of Agriculture, Division of Community Development, and the Office of the Control on the Agriculture Infrastructure Fund, AIF balance expenditure and aid purchase for the Navajo Nation chapters. The presenters will be Mr. Leo Watchman from the Department of Agriculture, Dr. Pearl Yellowman from Division of Community Development, as well as Mr. James Atakai and Mr. Robert Willey from the Controller's Office. You have 20 minutes to start, um, Mr. Watchman, and we'll share 20 minutes among the four. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. If I could, uh, the first, the main report would be coming from uh, community development. And we start with um, Ms. Yellowman, and then I'll fill in at the end if possible, Mr. Chair. Dr. Yellowman, you have the floor. <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll, Chair, if it's okay, I'll give a quick overview um, and just the the overall um, framework of the legislation. And then we do have some data and expenditures from our senior accountant, Mr. Lydell Davis. Um, Mr. Davis and Mr. Atakai have been the two who've been doing the community engagement, chapter engagement. <clears throat> Mr. Atakai has been working with um, various um, farm and land boards um, in, in educating and working and collaborating. Um, but Mr. Davis has the expenditure breakdown. So I'll just give a quick overview, Chair. Um, this was legislation RDC MA0721, and sponsor was um, uh, Delegate Stewart. So we appreciate Delegate Stewart. The original amount was $4 <clears throat> um, And the fund requirement from the Ag Agricultural um, Infrastructure Funds, the requirement was Certificate of Indian Blood, the valid grazing permit, and an active producer. Um, with the 2021. Um, so those were the original requirements. Um, and then keep in mind, we, we did discuss whether or not we would have a, an extension or if we would <clears throat> keep this ongoing until the funds ran out. Um, so if this particular legislation continues to move forward, we may need to update um, those particular dates um, for an active producer list. I'll, I'll keep moving on here. <clears throat> uh, so DCD, um, the way the legislation was written, um, DCD, um, we produce the procurement method with the chapters, um, which allowed us to work with um, Department of Ag to draw down the funds and then to work with the chapters. So our ASC, um, this 
almost involved our whole division. So our ASC, um, Ms. Jim Martin and our SPPS staff were critical um, components of, or played a role in working with the chapters to um, procure and identify um, their hay, grain and feed um, material or inventory. We did work closely with OMB and OOC to establish the business unit numbers for 110 chapters. Mr. Davis worked closely with um, the WIND system uh, in updating and gathering information. We still are in the process of producing a report for this. Um, uh, we can give some verbal numbers today and Mr. Davis does have a preliminary report, but we are asking our ASC to have the chapters um, update their win system to show accurate numbers. So I just want to share that with RDC. Part of this legislation required us to coordinate with all chapters to submit resolutions. We coordinated with, um, under this legislation, we did the reporting and monitoring, and then we provided ASC and our staff provided technical assistance on the budget forms. And then we also coordinated with district grazing officials um, and Eastern Land Board, and that was Mr. Adekai. So Mr. Adekai attended those meetings and worked closely with our land board, um, Eastern Land Board and grazing officials. Uh, and then um, we, we produced materials for orientations for the chapters. So just in closing, um, I think we, we dove into this legislation. Um, it was clear from members of RDC and the sponsor, Delegate Stewart, that um, he really wants to see these funds reach community members, um, community harvesters. Um, and so we tried our best to um, move in that direction. So Chair, I do um, have Mr. Adekai online, and then Mr. Davis is the one who has um, the current numbers on the expenditure. Um, so Chair, those would be the two I would call on if, if I can, um, but Mr. Davis would be able to possibly share his screen on the expenditures for each agency. So he was able to pull up data for all uh, five agencies, Chin Lee, Eastern, Fort Defiance and Shiprock and Western Agency um, with the amount. But I, like I said, we are working with ASC, SPPS staff to have the chapters um, update their win system so that we have um, a little bit more of an accurate number. But we do have a preliminary um, number to share with members of RDC. All um, in their chair with my quick overview. Um, but again, I do have Mr. Adekai on the line who worked with various boards and agency um, um, entities, and then Mr. Davis, who has the uh, numbers to report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Davis, and also Mr. Adekai, you have the floor. Good morning, can you hear me? This is Lydell Davis. Yes, go ahead. Uh, good morning. I, I did send two reports to uh, Rodney Tahi this morning. I hope that the members of RDC have received them. Uh, go ahead and proceed. Okay, so the first report, it should have um, all, it should have, uh, light blue highlight on some chapters. Those are the chapters that we have received reports from. Um, a lot of the chapters broke down their reports. Uh, thankfully, by the day they did their distributions and by what recipients were permit holders and which were not. So basically, I just uh, compiled 
as much of the information on the reports from the chapters to this Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you'll see that there are a lot of chapters that have not reported. So we did send out an email yesterday for them to provide the reports. And then the second attachment is just a wind system breakdown of all the amounts that the uh, chapters are reporting. Again, you will see that there are some blanks, which indicate some chapters are not updating their wind system numbers. Um, if you have any questions on either of these two spreadsheets, I am here for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adekar. Uh, Chair, if it's okay, if Lydell could just read um, the agency expenditures that, um, if, if he's able to just read what expenditures we have. Um, so on the report, you, you will see, for example, Western Agency has um, a total amount. Um, and then perhaps he could read a little bit more into what the report reads, if that's helpful, Chair. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Davis. Well, um, I'm not too sure which report you're referring to, Dr. Yeoman. Uh, but as far as the chapters receiving their funds, all 110 chapters have received their funds. Um, the wind system numbers, they are going to vary as chapters update their numbers. But I guess for, I'll go off the, the worksheet with the light green highlight, highlighted, mark, highlighted marks. Uh, I highlighted the cell in which the chapter received their funds. So for Eastern Agency, as of 11-30-2022, Eastern Agency has $105,255 left. But again, as chapters update their numbers, this <clears throat> update their balances, their, this, <clears throat> sorry, this number will change. So it's, I would, I, it's still in the working. So in the work, sorry. And then for Fort Defiance Agency, a total, there is a total of ten thousand nine hundred and sixty-four dollars left. Um, which I'm not. This is not saying that Fort Defiance Agency has completely expended their fund or is almost close to completely expending their funds. It's just the chapters that have reported. This is what is the total for Fort Defiance Agency. And then Northern Agency. They have a reported number of $39,978. Western Agency, they have a remaining balance of $13,509. And then for Chinle Agency, they have a total of $2. But again, don't take this number too seriously because it's for Chinle Agency, there's only one chapter well, two chapters that reported their final numbers for November. And the total amount remaining for the chapters as of 1130 is $169,708, but we are still waiting on many chapters to report the numbers. Thank you. Dr. Yellowman, are you done from DCD? Yes, Chair, um, and we'll be on the line for any questions, um, but we did provide an overview and our role. Um, we did work with um, Department of Ag, OOC, OMB, and ASC in all 110 chapters, including various um, land board and grazing um, committees or grazing um, districts. So we'll, we'll conclude there, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Robert Willie from the controller's office. Are you on the call? Well, Mr. Chair, this is Robert Willie. Uh, yes. Do you have a, a report? I, Mr. Chair, I don't have any report. Um, it was my understanding that um, community development was working on the report. So I would concur with Mr. Davis's findings. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Willie. Uh, Mr. Watchman, anything you'd like to add? <clears throat> Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to express my gratification to all the folks that worked on, on the legislation, the, um, the tribal entities, also the chapters, as well as the, um, the participants. Uh, <clears throat> there's some um, good things that have come out of the uh, mass, uh, I guess, um, incentive or, uh, I guess, to our producers out there. Some things we learned from that and some things we've gained, uh, some things we have gained is that we have set up business units for if we were to do this again, that we have a little better shot of being more expeditious. Um, some of the other learning curves is more communication locally on who's eligible and, and what purpose. Um, the agriculture infrastructure fund and the primary goal is to save uh, the forage moving forward. Uh, that's the emphasis of the infrastructure fund. I know at times it seems that we may have missed that scope or we're, we're hitting it right on the target, but. Um, there's been a, good, a lot of good feedback. Um, I guess the uh, the negative side to that is that some of our, um, our our elected officials, grazing officials, or Eastern Land Board members um, maybe disagreed, but at the end um, they they came aboard and um, got it out to their chapters. I'm very thankful for that. Um, there is some other legislation we'd like to move forward. Um, we hope it's before RDC. If we follow this mechanism, uh, it might have a uh, you know have a better chance of being more uh, efficient. If we choose um, the another mechanism, which is individual producer receiving the compensation directly, I guess we'll see in the future. Again, my um, thanks to Community Development, uh, Dr. Yellowman, her leadership, as well as the, um, the sponsor for pushing this forward and also the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Watchman, for your report. Honorable members of RDC, let's have a motion and a second. Motion, Daniel. Thank you. Second, Second Stuart. Honorable Stewart. Thank you. Honorable members of RDC, any comments or questions? Daniels. Honorable Daniels, you have the floor. Um, Quido, yeah, Quido. Mr. Chair, Vice Chair, Arundakwato, members of Resources and Development Committee. Arundakwato, members of the uh, 24th Council. Dakota colleagues, thank you, Dakota, for joining us. Arundakwato, the best house, thank you, Dakota, in Oshmagi, Dakota. Arundakwato, here's a report of the Yagi, Dakota, Shukdez, Dr. Yellowman. Arundakwato, Mr. Erkai. Arundakwato, the Controller, Controller's Office, Department of Ag, Mr. Watchman, thank you. Thank you for the update. Thank you for the report. I'm looking at the, um, the, 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 the spreadsheet here. Right, um, for Western Agency, uh, the, if you look at, uh, there's a chapter here. Um, Cameron, Cameron chapter. That chapter, my question would be, um, did that chapter receive AIF funds? It, uh, here it shows there's none. I don't know, I really appreciate the, or the, the sponsor of the, the legislation, delegate them. Resources and Development Committee for supporting the the legislation to help our ranchers at the local level. livestock owners I think for a I don't know. I just want to thank also the the chapters at the local level. Chapter officials, chapter staff, I think in Dash, Mr. Scott, along with the, the grazing official, I think he had a day made on this, but I actually have seen for a banana should I eat la. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, so some chapters they haven't expanded their spending, their dollars, but I don't know, I don't know, 
I don't know about that. Right now, people are looking for hey, that quite hard this day. I don't know about that. It's been hard to get that long that long that he didn't get that. You know that he is going down, going way down, and maybe look at things that look at all. He the Aiba man just can't look at. Once uh, Matthew runs out of hay, where are we going to get hay? Some of these chapters, they got their hay from Matthew, and some they got from other vendors. You look at the, the forge out there. They know what the dead eagle lay on children out there. There's little to no forage out there for the livestock. Because I don't know if I don't know if I don't know if I don't know as a livestock owner. So, that the responsibility of the, the livestock owner. I don't know if 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 I don't know the four million dollars that RDC approved out of 50-50 formula each of you know chapters which are method that la I don't know if job and get a beat. I could leave it and let you on a hard and a hard and เอสอาจจะอันนั้นเลนกี้ตัวนะนะสนิทเนาะเดี๋ยวเบเบนานกี้ตัวตัวตัวโฮลจิสนานะก็ซอกะเลกะเลกะเลกะตัวเนสันต
uh, they haven't uh, received the full amount because down at the bottom, grand total uh, for Chinle Agency, 1.5 million. Because for at the end of this month, I mean, um, November 30th to 2022, only 169,000 is available. Because none. So I'm not sure uh, if the uh, dollars are adding up in the spreadsheet. Uh, you're going from 1.5 million, where majority of it has zero zero the but you have 169,000 nabaka. Um, uh, for example, a Chinle agent, I mean a Chinle chapter of January and don um but but again, all the way across it doesn't say anything about how much money they receive um or or green box with uh a identified earlier uh the opinion chapter dot uh only maybe it's because of their certified chapter uh out of like for example Nazrini chapter um is it says that March 2022, Bacot, and all you have is about $5, $5, and then zero, zero, not the Bacot. So I'm trying to follow this uh, spreadsheet that was uh, uh, provided to us, uh, Chairman. And then on the uh, second, <clears throat> on the second uh, 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 handout, Satnana Nichohanana Dia. A G G A R D C M A seven twenty one. Uh again uh eight or how much um amount was uh sent over to the uh chapters Otapaka Kwakinana. So A D G that's in the amount of um $524,621.92 per cut. So compare and just in Coco. Um, uh, the the uh, first one, Nikki, uh, you, you're well over 1.5 million. So I'm not sure uh 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 yeah yes to get there uh because uh if I send them over to the uh, chapter because on the other yeah hot um uh then based on the car a year then is it uh some of these uh funding job uh expense report in the year e you guys are the oversight and he did not be hit the jizz on me what a coco dqacket halit all the 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 dollars are, are in a way different ado uh on the second Handout the Shiniki uh, RDC CMA 721 Bakagi. Uh, numbers of individual help Baka, uh total is that the overall agency level 217 the Nash Bay or what? Um, but um, Oto grain do salt and oh not the baka if you're if there's only uh for example um non permitted baka ki other permitting numbers baka I mean what is the overall total permit numbers or uh, grazing permits uh, tally number or count uh, how many permits 
author in the Chinle Agency, but only 127 or 217 Bacao would, but 90 of it, 90 of them are only. Uh, it says non permitted Baka eight or the night Gothiki or Blin Holonaki, a Ajibaka or what? But I mean, it says non permitted Naidi Baka or what do you have about 567 hay? Um, you're averaging almost, uh, I don't know how many uh, per individual of the Baka or what Aja, uh, non permitted Jiki, Ado. Um, let's say uh, 567, divide that by 90, an average about six hay per person, comparing to the uh, 127, the key, uh, 127. So, out of salt, GT again, um, 90. Uh, you're almost about two salt per person. That's what I've been called. That is what. So anyway, um, the um, yard be but but it's not in the coco. Um, specifically the grazing uh official than Linnicky. That's the other thing. Okay, uh, chairman. Um, uh, basically, I'm not old. Zito, basically, hats. Just to to any ahatne. Been hit the jizdo, been hawing ido. I mean, I'm sure that's the, re- the reason some of uh, some of us are not coming back in. That we were told that we're not doing our job. I call Monday, yeah, da, kado, back in November, yeah, da, that's um, grading officials on Linigi, uh, for for me, for Chinle Agency, uh, meeting vacate. That and other uh, like stipend that that hey, baby, 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 he had that and the Nido Kadida Tate or Kadini Yahana Tahita Tate or you're just passing the bucket to the individual that's coming in or should not need. So, my only response to the individual, to the elected official, was what more can I do? Yes, we are the oversight. I have requested formally through uh, a regular meeting of an RDC. I submit. A, me, uh, a statement in writing, and I verbally made a request at a regular meeting. So, us as a legislature, what are in EK, and there was an acknowledgement by the agriculture department that we will schedule it at certain days. I believe after the election, then everything, they began to just move it up again, or so it's okay for us to to be uh provide an update report on these type of information but why isn't that they don't provide these information directly to the chapter to the community service coordinator to the grazing officials and to the local chapter official we're the messenger between the administration, the executive branch, and the legislature to the local chapter, which they're under the executive branch. What more can we do in a way? What use is this my statement now? We're just like, okay, what are the coming January? We're trying to shuffle through some issues that we're trying to resolve. 
we'll get back to you. See that the Anit on up at that Nigo go that the January Doha Naha Jist on the Dida. So these are some areas that I've been providing, I mean, I've been asking and requesting that why aren't these information sent directly to the individual, the local elected official do, who works directly with the uh, permittees? And the great, I mean, the uh, the chapter officials, the 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 uh, the, the, the chapter coordinators. Hashit ado ado hajo di it al nit ej hajo bet nahanetta. A kodi kodi kodi. I mean, again, I mean, kodi kodi kodo. A budget kodo nidnit ejo a finance report a kodo nidnit every single month at the chapter meeting. So does this mean that the chapter has been providing inaccurate information to the public or that, okay, when my chapter is saying that we don't have the funding? Again, the Shunit Ah Chairman, what's the use of it for me being uh, the last days of being a delegate? Then of course, coming in January, then I'm probably be will be perceived to say that well, not to say that I'm just trying to defend myself, but over this is a prime example of why I've been trying to ask the uh, the Department of Agriculture and the program to have series of meetings with the local elected officials rather than us being the messenger to the local chapter. And then, of course, or that I may misinterpret uh, uh, or provide uh, inaccurate information as well. So did that. Uh, again, cha- uh, Chairman, I mean, uh, how, what good is it for me to make a, another statement as such, uh, knowing that, I mean, it's probably going to be uh, 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 not going to be resolved uh, within a month. What is the uh, true data? What is the true accurate information, the dollar amount the key that were spent? Can, 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 that, can we specifically have one column? saying that, okay, this is how much uh, 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 each chapter were given as of today, this is how much money was spent, and maybe this is how much, this is the balance. All over agency, maybe by my, uh, uh, by, by, by delegate region, that way we can uh, submit these to our chapter to say that this is what we got from the uh, uh, the department regarding the the AIF, but the don't need hot other there stop being a chairman. So again, uh, I need the accurate, true, update information for each of the chapters that I represent. Chef, of course, hot IFD Bahasi or is that chairman? Thank you, Honorable Begay. Let me go back to Dr. Yellowman. Your response. Dr. Yellowman. Dr. Yellowman. Dr. Adekai. Hello, Shananda. This is, this is James Adekai from DCD. May you respond, sir, to a couple of concerns and questions by Honorable Daniels and Honorable Begay? Yes, so uh, I have Liddell Davis right here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and provide the response. Good morning. I lost connection or something's going on with my line. Um, but to Delegate 
Daniels, Cameron Chapter did receive those funds in September. Um, that cell is highlighted green as that's when they received the funds and I don't have a figure in there because the chapter has not reported it. And then to delegate E. Allen Begay, uh, the worksheet you're questioning, it follows the same format as the WIN system. So if you check your chapter's WIN system balances, it follows the exact same format. Um, so the dollar being reported every month, that's the month and balance the chapter reported for those months. Uh, I don't, I, like I said, my off connection, so I'm not sure if I missed any other uh, questions. Um, Mr. Watchman? Uh, would you like to also respond, sir? <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chair. Um, we, one of the questions that probably could um, shed some light on is the supply and demand of hay uh, moving forward. Uh, I did indicate earlier that this is not the first um, type of um, assistance that, that we will be um, looking at um, as we move forward, getting better. But um, once we do get allocation of monies, is securing the um, uh, the supply of hay and working with vendors, not only NAPI but other vendors, and mainly in the south. Um, there has been some vendors wanting to work with Navajo from Oklahoma area. Uh, we have made some contact, but uh, I guess it relies on as we move forward with the coming um, winter months and also the spring. And uh, yes, there is going to be a drought next year again. And that's getting better at how we respond and also how we get our producers to um, pre-prepare uh, uh, for the uh, coming climate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Watchman. Dr. Yellman, are you on the call? Chairman Kellen. Uh, Honorable Begay, your follow-up. Uh, Chairman, um, may I have the, the the Department of Agriculture respond to my statement regarding why they're, they they haven't scheduled uh, a session with the uh, Chinle Agency grazing official, uh, which was uh, tentatively scheduled but it keeps being uh, uh, delayed to, uh, for a meeting. Uh, can Can I? Get specific uh, response on record, Chairman. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Watchman. Your response, sir. <clears throat> um, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Leo Watchman here. Can I respond to that? Yes, go ahead. <clears throat> uh, we did. Uh, there's somebody. There was a request out early in the year or late in, I guess, late in the year, this, this past September, um, with fiscal year uh, ending and also new fiscal year beginning. Um, <clears throat> we do provide updates at the Chinley Agency meetings, and there's been three since that request. But also we held a, a reservation-wide update um, training um, since that time. Um, I, and we do plan to provide updates, also additional training as we move into the before the, uh, or excuse me, the second quarter of the fiscal year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Watchman. Honorable Begay, do you have a follow-up? Um, could I get that in writing, uh, Chairman, so I can share that with the five chapters? I uh, appreciate it, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Begay, for your request. Um, Mr. Watchman, uh, we, the Resource and Development Committee respectfully requests that you uh, send your response to Honorable Begay in writing and email it to him, sir. Watchman. Mr. Watchman.
Uh, Mr. Chair, we will provide that income with that that um, written statement. Um, we we'll, I will assure that in the next um, few days. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Watchman. Honorable members of RDC, any other comments or questions on the report? On twice. Chairman, comment. Um, yes, go ahead. You have the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. RDC members and Glenninki, so Yak Ehnon, Otto, Dr. Yellowman, and um, Mr. Watchman, so Yak Ehto, staff, the co, Hilton Day Lishito, Kodom, the Hun Das Nisha, Kodo Chat Zagito, Hilton Das Nisha, Kunzaho, just for the AIF funding. Ako, as stated earlier, you know, this is this funding was intended and is intended to be used for the local ranchers and also the at the time you know to see what needed to be done to give them the assistance for two thousand dollars each some used it to get their feed their livestock for their last so I'll say, yeah, they use it to get their pawns out or whatever needed to be done for them as a family and then um, get themselves situated at the time of the pandemic. And then they, they, they had to um, sacrifice something for their livestock. You know, you use that when you need it and that purpose you know, whenever you need money again, you know, you know, and that's what we did, you know, and that's how this AIF funding came about. You know, on some chapters and some constituents, you know, they were saying that, you know, he caught an audible with the that just don't need, you know, and I was like, wait a minute, you know, we, we did what we needed to do as legislatures. We got it out. And you know we we used it in that way you know to to get help for our livestock because again you know livestock they don't talk to us you know we as livestock owners we have to understand them pet owners we have to understand our pets you know and we take care of them that's what we know how and this was overall for the Navajo Nation and some chapters you know, they did their part but one thing I was worried about from the very beginning was you know to make sure that the officials grazing officials staff didn't use it just for themselves but yet that's one thing i knew was going to happen and some chapters did that they gave more to themselves and to their officials than to the community members granted it can't be helped because you know it was already done there's no way to really track it but we did the best we could like mr watchman stated you know these these are learning curves that we're doing as we go further down the line, we'll learn how to use the funds that are going to be used, are supposed to be intended to be used in that manner. But I do want to say thank you to the Department of Agriculture and also Division of Community Development, Dr. Yellman, your entire staff for put, helping to put together a plan and devising a plan to where the chapters, that's what they wanted, local governance. We put it in their lap. Some knew what to do with it. Some had to be educated. Some were, didn't want to do it. But, you know, in the end, you know, it was for the ranchers. It was to be given back to their livestock and that purpose. And that way, we are in the job. We are going in that direction. We hear every day on the news what needs to be done, how communities are starting to conserve. But we need to also continue those, you know, in, in, in that manner, in that respect. So again, I want to thank, you know, RDC members for assisting me and passing this legislation and the chapters and the division and again, Department of Agriculture for the assistance given at that time. And let's continue to improve the services that we provide to our community chapters. Arkansas Chairman, thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Stewart. Honorable members of RDC, any other comments or questions? Uh, Chairman Thomas Walker. 
Honorable Vice Chair Walker, you have the floor, sir. Uh, thank you, Chairman and committee members, other and staff, so, and the um, colleagues that are on the call with us, so the listening audience that we have this morning, that's Erico. Other the um, presenters also, Department of Agriculture and BCD, the controller's office, Sekoyate. So, um, so okay for the report. Um, just a comment I want to make based on uh, our delegates, as delegates, our participation and involvement in local government, local chapter government. Through our uh, monthly or bi monthly monthly reports, bi weekly reports, planning meetings, all chapter meetings. Although we get to hear reports of uh, region officials, all chapter officials, all chapter staff, uh, the, the projects on Limigi, and certainly the uh, AIF. A project a ipa na hande ako te ako ako ibin na siya ado the uh, spreadsheet that was sent to RDC membership this morning the ones we're looking at now ado uh, that that <clears throat> is information that that we know or uh, is new to us yo kagi ako te ako asin gipe da hazan sa ado we don't defend the husband, Jojo, but El Aquend Ash. So, just speaking from the perspective of uh, the five chapters that I represent in my region, um, two of them seem to be expending that that funding. One has spent all that money, so like like we had hoped and planned and wanted it as um, you know the uh, yeah legislation is yagi. Ah, uh, that implement Ilya ako. Oh, ado, I did not hear a whole lot of complaints or confusion from that particular chapter. Ado sa ya, there's two other chapters, my chapters that have not spent anything. Three yet, lah, three. Sa either they're still spending. One has spent all of it. The other three, gie, they've spent nothing, no dollars. So, one chapter eight so ホンチェダイエドトネイジャホデイレナンサエタトオイケタナハズタオエイエトエコタアアドアデキスエイレイジンフィショギネドナルソシャナンジャタトシャダブデナナサエスタフギクエナナナナナナナナナナナナナナナ
at unlay the in the implementation or the execution edo edo hinan edo ti de ani then we can't coordinate it we can advise we can ask for updates updates on the um the fund the project uh we can do that that's as far as we can go as uh, legislatures lichin hinan ji ne hegedo ko panai di lichido ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
and you see that they implement. And there are one or two chapters that do come across some challenges and some not to any fault of their own. There are people out there that take advantage of chapters. There are vendors out there that take advantage of some of the money that comes to the nation, et cetera. That, that happens and that's not, to no fault of the chapter officials or chapter staff. And then of course, there's one or two chapters that um, there's conflict and that conflict can really hold up delivering resources to the community members. So I really ask that the chapters that do encounter conflict um, learn how to resolve the conflict and learn how to um, put conflict um, and mediate and put conflict aside so that the resources can get to the community members. Um, we all can do our part, but until those items or those barriers are removed, um, people um, miss out on these valuable resources. So I just wanna add that chair. Um, and again, we did learn a lot and we um, appreciate the help from DNR, OOC, Mr. Rob Willie. He's always reaching out to us and working with us. So we always appreciate working with Rob Willie um, too. But moving forward, the point of contact will be Mr. Davis, Lydell Davis. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dr. Yellowman. Certainly appreciate your staff um, always trying their best to help the chapter. So again, and we wish the staff to continue working hard with the chapter as well. I don't care. Honorable members of RDC, any other comments or questions? Vice. On three times, we'll go ahead and do the roll call vote at this time to accept the report. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? Chairman, I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Begay? Uh, I vote green, accept the report, Chairman. Thank you. Honorable Daniels? Honorable Freeland? Honorable Stewart. Green Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Stewart. Honorable Daniels. Green Chairman. Honorable Daniels. Green, green. Okay, thank you. Honorable Freeland. Green. Honorable Freeland. Chairman, Delegate Freeland votes green. Okay. Thank you. We have a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Motion carries. We'll accept the report from Department of Agriculture, Division of Community Development, also from the Controller's Office. Thank you. I'm off to go down to B. Update report from Navajo Environmental Protection Agency on the public comment period regarding the Cypress Amex Mineral Company and Western Nuclear Incorporated consent decree with the United States government and the United Navajo Nation on investigation and cleanup of 94 mine sites. Presenter will be from Navajo EPA, Director Linda Shirley, Mr. Warren Rowan, and there's other staff as well. So, Ms. Shirley, are you on the call? Yes, if Chairman, um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You have 20 minutes, so you may proceed at this time. Thank you. Shanat Ani, Honorable Chair Nezado, RDC members, Honorable members, Yad Eto, Shahat Dini, Nikidini, Dole, Ado, Shikeno, Shidi, Ada, Das, Nostagi, Yad Eh, Anoto. Chair, there, um, there is um i did so i was um a little confused about the the title of the report 
So uh, the confusion on my part is that, for instance, a public comment means that it's open to the general public to comment on. And currently there are no reports or documents or um, any um, environmental engineering cost analysis available for the public to comment on. So I did reach out to um, Mr. Rodney Tahi. I appreciate his um, email yesterday kind of explaining what exactly the report should um, should entail. So uh, according to um, the clarification email we received from Mr. Tahi, um, we will be reporting on the comments that we provide from Navajo EPA on the technical documents that Cypress AMAX provides to US EPA and Navajo EPA. So um, within the consent decree, Navajo Nation EPA is named as a supporting agency. And one of the roles of a supporting agency is um, to provide comments. So if ever there's a technical document that needs clarification or needs review, excuse me, um, that document is provided to US EPA and Navajo EPA. And then from there, um, personnel within US EPA and Navajo EPA &E will review the document. And then there is a joint collaboration on the comments. For instance, um, we would provide our comments to US EPA and then US EPA will provide their comments to us. And then we provide joint comments to um, Cypress AMAX. And then so that process kind of goes back and forth. Um, when in the summer of 2021, it was brought to my attention from Mr. Will Duncan within US EPA that there were documents that were outstanding. Um, so Navajo EPA had fallen behind on some of the review of the documents. And since then, we've been working very hard to address um, those those are shortfalls in making sure that these comments are provided in a timely manner. And as of today, I can certainly um, and confidently report to our oversight committee that we do not have any outstanding comments. Um, so Cypress AMAX is not waiting for our Navajo EPA to provide any comments on any of the technical documents. We do have other comments that we um, are preparing to provide to US EPA and other responsible parties. But again, to Cypress AMAX, we are up to date. So um, I can um, open up the floor to Mr. Warren Rowan to see if he has any other additional comments. Uh, Chair, I also have on the line with us um, US EPA remedial project managers to kind of help clarify if there's anything that needs clarification. And I did ask uh, Ms. Jen Lagan to be on the line with us as well, too, um, uh, just again, to, in case there was anything that needed clarification. So with that, Chair, um, may I ask Mr. Warren Rohn to um, add any additional comments that he might have, sir? Thank you. Mr. Rowan? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the Resources Committee. Um, uh, thank you, Belinda, uh, for that summary. Um, I do not have any uh, further comments. Uh, Director Shirley uh, summed it up um, pretty well. And uh, we um, also have uh, Jennifer uh, Lagan of uh, Cypress AMAX uh, on the line. And um, no, actually, I, I do have a comment um, in regards to the receiving report um, item B, um, it indicates that um, that the NNEPA uh, was to provide uh, public comments on the Cypress AMAX Minerals Company and Western Nuclear uh, Incorporated Consent Decree uh, with the United States government um, and Navajo Nation on the investigation uh, and cleanup of 94 mine sites. So um, I, had um, contacted uh, Jennifer Lagan, and she uh, is on the line to provide any clarifications on uh, any statements uh, that were uh, made um, uh, on her behalf to um, various members of the RDC committee. So I would like to um, um, give uh, the floor to uh, Jennifer Lagan, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jennifer, you have the floor. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the RDC committee. I uh, appreciate the, the opportunity to clarify this point that was made to several members of RDC in a meeting last week. Uh, e e Director Shirley uh, summarized this very well um, in, in our update uh, that we provided to um, you last week. We were intending to convey um, some of the delays that had occurred over the past two to three years, um, most notably, most notably because of some of the COVID shutdowns of the Navajo Nation that um, hampered field work that we were doing or, or had planned to do. Also, um, some delays in review of reports, which um, I am happy to say have since been rectified. And as Director Shirley reports, we currently, although we currently have some reports in review with Navajo EPA, they have been submitted in the past month or two and are well within the time expected for review of those reports um, and, and are working diligently with uh, both EPA and Navajo EPA to resolve those uh, those those reports so we could move forward. Um, as as I've mentioned before, we continue to be um, ready and willing to perform the work that's required under the consent decree for us on Navajo. And I'd also just like to state that that um, we, we are we do have funding in place to to perform that work once an ultimate decision is made on on the work that will be done. Thank you. Chair. Thank you. Ms. Shirley, back to you. Um, Chair, I don't know if um, our federal partners, um, Kenyon, would like to provide any additional comments, but um, I, I, I leave it to Kenyon if he has anything to add. But um, that kind of concludes what we have, and we certainly stand for questions and any clarification needed, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shirley. Honorable members of RDC, let's have a motion and a second. Motion, Daniel. Thank you, Honorable Daniels. Second by. Stewart. Honorable Stewart, thank you. Honorable members of RDC, any comments or questions? On twice. Chairman uh, Keallen. Honorable Gay, you have the floor. Um, Chairman Keallen, um, um, there's quite a few things that um, we have a very, very, very uh, huge issue about uranium, but we spend less time talking about it. Um, not sure how to even resolve those particular issue. But um, last week on the Basasitlito and I know that uh, to move forward, uh, there needs to be some action needs to be done by the executive branch. And I know that uh, there needs to be some form of a uh, a response by the nation you don't need to be and I know there's a letter uh, uh, floating around uh, that needs uh, the action needed by the uh, president for um, uh, um, well that be addressed because uh, to my understanding uh, this particular issue needs to be addressed before the end of this month before uh, Things will, uh, I don't know, uh, if, if, we, if, it, we, if, if it's not done, I mean, 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 uh, specifically uh, for my area, claim 28 in other areas, um, 
Uh, thank you, um, Honorable Begay. Let me go to Ms. Shirley for her response. Um, Chair, I'm happy to respond to um, Shana Delegate T. Allen. Um, I, 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 I think I know what you're you're to, you're talking about, um, sir. In in November, in November, uh, US EPA did provide a letter to um, the executive branch. Um, so the letter in, described um, how US EPA would like to um, list the Luke Ajige Mining District as a possible Superfund site. Um, we do have the the letter drafted for for parent, uh, for president signature um one of the questions that remains is how will the superfund site impact land use so that was one area that um we were still um researching so in other areas of course um there's um, impact to property, property taxes, property value, and so forth. But for the Navajo Nation, what, what will that mean? And then one of the other questions that were posed to um, our, our attorneys was what, what land use restrictions will there be? Like, will it impact future home site leases and um, business site leases? So that is still an outstanding question. And once we get that clarification on how it will impact um, certain land use, then we will um, certainly get that letter over to President to sign as soon as possible. And I, I do understand that there is um, a time a time frame that we're working with, and it's um, it's urgent that we do get those questions um, asked so, or asked and resolved. So, with um, Ella, so I, I hope that helps. And then um, we are working on it too, just to provide some reassurance to um, honorable members of our um, Natani here that we we are working on getting that letter and that um, concurrence over to US EPA as soon as we can. So, Ella, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shirley, for your response. Honorable Begay, do you have a follow-up? Um, uh, Chairman, um, of course, uh, it's the 14th of December uh, with the holidays coming up. I mean, what's the assurance that there will, the nation will fall through on this particular uh, process? Uh, a lot of time, it's just the 11th hour that we do things and Later, you have need to do, not not knowing that the nation will be dried down administratively, that the double cup on that day. So, with these um, uh, the shortening of the uh, day work days in the month of December, uh, we're talking about less than ten days. That's I mean, how did what's the assurance that this particular situation will be resolved before the end of the month, Chairman? Uh, thank you, Honorable Begay, for, for that question. Hello, Ms. Shirley. Jiren al tos nagaidan okay to get all kada and an dialogue with us. Bahay tell us that the president Ms. Jiren al tos to give us the idol little nature bet or never but not hard tunnel. A cotida Hello, le Arjun Haljisha Ash Ashanish. Is is will it be submitted, Ms. Shirley? Um, I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to um submit it within um the, the time frame allowed. Uh, again, just um waiting on that clarification on what um on what on on that land use portion. And then from what we've researched, just to research um, there shouldn't be any impact to to the land use out there, but again, just want to make sure that we are we're not putting ourselves in a position where we're going to tell residents in the future that they won't be able to do this or that just because it's a super fun site. 
So uh, um, I, I'm happy to to report at the next um, RDC meeting on the progress that we're making in regards to this um, Luc Ajage mining district. So that's um, certainly something I can do to to help this along too, sir. Thank you, Ms. Shirley. We do have the president staff on the call with us today, and I'm sure they will uh, collaborate with your office as well to get this uh, taken care of as soon as possible. And also, yes, we would appreciate your updated uh, report to RDC on the concerns that we have also in the future as soon as we can. Thank you. Honorable members of RDC, any other comments or questions? On twice, on three times, we'll do the roll call vote at this time. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? Chairman, I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Begay? Uh, Chairman, I can vote green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Daniels? Green. Thank you. Honorable Freeland votes green. He just sent in his text message. Honorable Stewart. Green. Thank you. We have a vote of five in favor, zero opposed, chair not voting. Motion carries. We will accept the report from Navajo EPA as well as Cypress Max. Yeah, Ms. Shirley, thank you very much to your staff. And also Jennifer, thank you for getting on the call. Moving down, number six, old business, none. Number seven, new business. First on the list is legislation 0232-22. Chetzilla, Honorable Elmer Begay, are you still on the call with us? Honorable Elmer Begay. Press star six to unmute. Hi, is uh, Honorable B Elmer Begay on the call with us? The chairman, Delegate Elmer Begay is on the call. I'm asking him to unmute his phone. Okay, we'll give him a little bit of time here. Honorable Elmer Begay. Twice. Uh, Chairman. Once. Yes. <clears throat> Chairman, other committee members, uh, with this particular uh, legislation, I did sign as a co sponsor. Uh, Tom okay. Walker. Um, Mr. Tahi, do you have that um, updated co sponsorship? The chairman, yes, I do have the updated sponsorship list right here. Delegate Thomas Walker is a co-sponsor on this legislation. Okay, thank you for um, announcing that on the record. Um, Ms. Khan, just um, for your advisement, we do have um, Honorable Vice Chair Walker as the co-sponsor to this legislation. It's not written on the agenda, but um, Mr. Tahi, our advisor, just let us know that. Um, Ms. Khan, are we good with that? Ms. Khan? Mr. And, Chair? Uh, Mr. Tahi? Yes, go ahead. Um, Mr. Chair, I had just stepped down the hall to pick up something. I'm sorry, I missed the question. Okay, um, on the agenda, we have legislation 0232-22. Honorable Elmer Begay is the main sponsor, but on Honorable Vice Chair Walker just let us know that he signed on to that as a co-sponsor, but it's not written on the agenda. And Mr. Tahi, uh, let us know that Honorable Vice Chair Walker is the co-sponsor. So I was just asking, are you okay with that? Um, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, 
The Office of Legislative Services keeps track of sponsors and co-sponsors. Um, Mr. Tahi is right in that building. I, I would assume Mr. Tahi has access to that knowledge from um, Ms. Julissa Johnson and Mr. Manuel Rico and those who are keeping track of, of the legislation and uh, sponsors and co-sponsors who sign on. Um, at this moment, I would, um, I would think that that would be sufficient if you would like to wait for Mr. Tahi to send the co-sponsorship um, document, we could do that if you would feel more comfortable with that. Otherwise, I, okay. I, I do believe that that would be sufficient. And the, the document itself, um, uh, would the official document, would have um, the co-sponsor's name on it. However, if you would like a copy of that, um, Mr. Tahi could run down the hall and, and um, ask that it be sent out to members of the committee. Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Collins. Um, Mr. Tahi, if you would. Um send us that document, but go ahead and uh, read this into the record. This legislation will go on to budget and finance, and the full council will have final authority on this legislation. Mr. Tahi. Uh, Chairman, members of RDC, legislation 0232-22 was sent in the calendar invite, which is updated and does have um, Delegate Thomas Walker Jr.'s um, signature on the, the page as well. So that's for the record as well. Thank you. You may proceed reading the legislation, sir. Thank you. You have summary sheet for legislation number 0232-22, date December 1st, 2022. An action relating to the resource and development, budget and finance and navigate committees, Antonin Affination Council, approving 17513187 from the CISA Sun Fund from the Navajo Nation Shopping Center, Inc. for the NNSCI proposed expansion of the Delcon Shopping Center, approving the related expenditure plan. Purpose of this legislation is to approve 17513187 from the CISA Sun Fund from the Navajo Nation Shopping Center, Inc. to implement and complete its proposed expansion project for the Delcon Shopping Center approving the ex expenditure plan for the project. Navajo Nation Council has final authority over this legislation, which we read into the record in its entirety. The primary sponsor of this legislation is Honorable Elmer P. Begay, co-sponsors Honorable Thomas Walker Jr. for tracking number 0232-22, an action relating to resource and development, budget and finance, and advocate committees, and to the Navajo Nation Council, approving 17513187 from the CISA Sun Fund for the Navajo Nation Shopping Center, Inc., for NNCSI proposed expansion of the Delcon Shopping Center, approving the related expenditure plan. In section one outlines authority, which references exhibit A, exhibit A1. In section two is the findings, which references exhibits A, A1, exhibit B, exhibit C, exhibit D, and exhibit E. In section three is the approving 17513 1187 from the CISA Sun Fund from the Navajo Nation Shopping Centers, Inc. for NNSC's eyes proposed expansion of the Delcon Shopping Center, approving the related expenditure plan, which references Exhibit C. Then you have Section 4, the effective date, and Section 5, the savings clause. Attaches Exhibit A, which is a resolution of the Navajo Nation Council approving the establishment of the Navajo Nation Shopping Centers as the Corporation of the Navajo Nation and the adoption of the Articles of Incorporation and Bylaws. Attaches Exhibit A1, which is the governing bylaws of the Navajo Nation Shopping Center, Inc. Attaches Exhibit B, a letter dated November 14th, 2022. Signed by Nicholas Taylor, CEO of Navajo Nation Shopping Center, Inc., regarding the shopping center, attaches Exhibit C, which is the Commercial Retail Real Estate Investment, the complementary investment of the Delcon Region Economic Expansion currently underway, attaches Exhibit D, which is the Executive Summary of the Delcon Chapter Commercial Retail Development Use Concept, attaches Exhibit E, 
which is the resolution of the Del Clan chapter of the Navajo Nation supporting and approving the request of the CISA Sun Fund in the amount of $16,113,174 for the expansion of the Del Clan Shopping Center for the major population growth of Del Clan Community Area Resolution Number DIL-2022-11-001. Then you have the first report, the Navajo Nation Legislative Branch Internet Public Review Summary for Legislation Number 0232-22. The sponsor is Honorable Elmer P. Begay. This legislation was posted on December 2nd, 2022 at 326 p.m. The five-day comment period ended December 7th, 2022. You have seven comments supporting this legislation, zero comments opposing, and zero recommendations on this legislation. The comment supporting this legislation is Robert and Margie Barton, Alberto Pashlakai, Lorenzo Lee Sr., Sylvia Wheelsley, William Launchlins, six Andrea Lester, and seven Sally Heat. In addition, you have resolution of the Winslow Indian Health Center Board of Directors, resolution number WIH. CC-2021-07, requesting the Delcon Chapter Navajo Nation United States Postal Service to take all actions necessary to obtain the U.S. Postal Code for the Delcon and surrounding communities. Then you have a resolution number, um, resolution by the Winslow Indian Health Center, the boards of director requesting the Navajo Tribal Utility Authority Navajo Nation to ensure permanent electric power available to the Delcon Medical Center in a timely matter, W. IIHCC-2023. Then you have a resolution for the Winslow Indian Healthcare Center, the department requesting resolution requesting Navajo Nation, Navajo Nation Fire and Rescue Department to take all necessary and ensure fire protection services available in the Delcon Medical Center adjacent building and staff quarters in a timely manner. The resolution number is WIHCC-2022-06. Then finally, you have the Winslow Indian Health Center resolution number WIHCC-2022-07 resolution of the Winslow Indian Health Center requesting recommending the Navajo Nation Office of the President, Vice President, Navajo Nation Department of Water Resource, Navajo Nation Environmental Protection Agency, Resource Development Committee of the Navajo Nation Council, and the Navajo Nation Council, Health Education Human Services Committee of the Navajo Nation, the Indian Health Service and Navajo Tribal Utility Authority to do all things necessary to reduce the high total dissolvent solid reportedly contained in the loop well W01 that is to be permanent water source for the Delcom Medical Center and shopping surrounding districts five and seven. Chair members of RDC, that is legislation number 0232-22 read into the record. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Tahoe. Honorable members of RDC, let's have a motion and a second. Chairman, motion. Chairman, motion, Kevin. Honorable Stewart, motions seconded by Honorable Keel and the Gay Jr. Honorable members of RDC, this legislation moves on to budget and finance. Nabigia T and the full council. Do you have any comments or questions on the legislation? On twice. On three times, we'll have a roll call vote. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? Chairman, I vote green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Begay. Uh, Chairman Kale votes green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Daniels. Hey. Honorable Daniels? Green. Thank you. Honorable Freeland? Green. Thank you. Honorable Stewart? Green Chairman. Thank you. We have a vote of five in favor, zero opposed, turn out voting. Motion carries on legislation 0232-22. Thank you, Honorable Vice Chair Walker. Thank you, committee members. Yeah, staff.
sponsor, everyone on the call. There you go. B, legislation 0233-22. Honorable Eugene So, are you on the call, sir? Oh, call for state. Okay, thank you. Mr. Ty, could you read this into the record, sir? The chair members of RDC the summary receipt for tracking number 0233-22, date December 1st, 2022, an action relating to resource and development, budget and finance and advocate committees, and to the Navajo Nation Council approving 65,000 from the CISA Sun Fund for the demolition and cleanup of the former Smith's Cafe business site under the Chinle RBDO approving the related expenditure plans. Purpose of this legislation is to approve 65,000 from the CISA Sun for the Chinle's RBDO proposed demolition and cleanup of the Bandam Smith Cafe's business site in Chinle and approving the related expenditure plan. Navajo Nation Council has final authority over this legislation, which will be read into the record in its entirety. The primary sponsor of this legislation is Honorable Eugene So for tracking number 0233-22, an action relating to resource and development, budget and finance, and advocate committees, and to the Navajo Nation Council, approving 65000 from the CISA Sun Fund for the demolition and cleanup of the former Smith's Cafe business Signed under the Chinle RBDO approving the related expenditure plan. In section one outlines the authority. In section two, the finding, which includes an exhibit A, exhibit B, exhibit C, exhibit D. In section three is proving 65,000 from the CISA Sun Fund from the Demolition and cleanup of the former Smith's Cafe business site under the Chinle RBDO and approving the related expenditure plan, which references Exhibit D. A section four is the effective date and section five is the savings clause. It attaches Exhibit A, which is a letter dated December 1st, 2022, regarding the former Benny Smith business site in the amount of 65000 which was signed by, by Marta Yazi, program manager, attaches Exhibit B, which is the Chinle Regional Business Development Office five-year plan for 2022 to 2026. It attaches Exhibit C, which is the project summary for the demolition and site cleanup project for the former Benny Smith business site in Chinle, Arizona. It attaches Exhibit D, which is the cost summary of the Navajo Nation DED Smith's Cafe Demolition. Then finally, you have the first report, the Navajo Nation Legislative Branch in a Public Review Summary for Legislation Number 0233-22, Sponsors Honorable Eugene So. This legislation was posted on December 2nd, 2022 at 3.33 p.m. The five-day comment period ended December 7th, 2022. There was no comment supporting this legislation. There was no comment opposing this legislation. There was no comments or recommendation on this legislation. Chair members of RDC, that is legislation number 02 33-22 read into the record. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Pauly, for reading that into the record. Honorable members of RDC, let's have a motion and a second. Motion, Stuart Yellick. Honorable Stewart, motion, second by Honorable Begay. Honorable members of RDC, this legislation moves on to Budget and Finance Committee, Navigate Committee, and the full Navajo Nation Council. Are there any comments or questions? One twice. One three times. We'll do the roll call vote at this time. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? Yes, uh, Chairman, I vote green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Begay. Chairman Calvert, green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Daniels. Green. Thank you. Honorable Freeland. Honorable Stewart. Green, Chairman. Honorable Stewart votes green. Honorable Freeland. 
We have a vote of four in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Motion carries on legislation 0233-22. Thank you, Honorable Eugene So. Merry Christmas. The legislation 0236-22. Honorable Chair Eugenia Charles Noon, are you on the call with us? Yes, Chair Naz, I am on the call. Thank you. Mr. Tai, could you read this into the record, sir? Chair members of RDC, you have shown receipt for tracking number 0236-22, date December 6, 2022, an act relating to the resource development, law and order, budget and finance, and navigate committees, and the Navajo Nation Council, allocating 900000 from the tourism fund to the tourism department for its personnel and operating expenses for FY 2023, amending 24 NNC Section 741 to allow revenue in the tourism fund to be used by all programs for tourism-related purposes, rescinding resolution number CS-45-22. Purpose of the legislation is to approve 900000 from the HOT dash tourism fund for the tourism department slash DED to cover the department's personnel and operating expenses for FY 2023, amending the HOT statute to allow the HOT dash tourism fund to be used by all programs rescinding the previous resolution on this matter, resolution number CS dash 45 dash 22. Navajo Nation Council has final authority over this legislation, which we read into the record in its entirety. The primary sponsor of this legislation is Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton, co-sponsored by Honorable Otto So. Tracking number 0236-22, an act relating to the resource and development, law and order, budget and finance, and advocate committees, and the Navajo Nation Council, allocating 900000 from the tourism fund into the tourism department for its personnel and operating expenses for FY 2023, amending 24 NNC Section 741 to allow revenue in the tourism fund to be used by all programs for tourism-related purposes, rescinding resolution number CS-45-22. And Section 1 outlines the authority... In section two, the finding, which it references in exhibit A, exhibit B, exhibit C, exhibit D, exhibit E, exhibit F, and exhibit G. In section three, is allocating 900000 from the tourism fund into the tourism department for its personnel and operating expenses for FY 2023, which references exhibit C, D, and E. It also includes a section five, a directive. And section four is amending 24 NNC section 741 to allow revenue in the tourism fund to be used by all programs for tourism related purposes. In section five is a directive. In the directive, it reads no later than 60 calendar dates after the effective date of this act, the tourism department shall prepare amendments to the original fund management plan for the HOT tourism fund, which FMP has approved in BFO 56 93. Such amendments shall conform to the 24 NNC section 741 amendments approved in this act and shall be presented to the Budget and Finance Committee for final approval within 60 calendar days. In section six is rescinding resolution number CS 45 22. In section seven is the codification which reference section four and references um, exhibit H. In Section A, the effective date, which references Section 3C of this legislation, and Section 9 is a savings clause. Attaches Exhibit A, which is the resolution of the budget and finance of the Navajo Nation Council approving the Navajo Nation Tourism Fund Management Plan to be administered by the Navajo Tourism Department, Division of Economic Development, Resolution Number BFO-56-93. Attaches Exhibit B, Resolution of the Navajo Nation Council, the 21st Navajo Nation Council, third year, 2009. 
Resolution number CJA-06-09. Attaches exhibit C, which is the Navajo Nation Supplemental Funding Proposal, proposal Summary for the Economic Development in the amount requested of 900,000. Attaches exhibit D, which is the Navajo Nation Budget Summary for the Tourism Department. Attaches exhibit E, which is the Navajo Nation listing of positions and assignments by business unit. Attaches exhibit F is a memorandum to Lorraine Tapahi from Robert Willie, dated October 6, 2022. The subject is a tourism fund balance, November 3rd, 2022. Attaches exhibit G, which is a letter dated October 7th, 2022. Regarding CS45-22, this letter was signed by Honorable Jonathan Nez, President, and Honorable Myron Leiser, Vice President. Attached Exhibit H, which is Section 741 of the allocation. Then you have the first report, the Navajo Nation Legislative Branch Internet Public Review Summary for Legislation Number 0236-22, sponsors Honorable Eugene Charles Newton. This legislation was posted on December 6, 2022 at 5.45 p.m. The five-day comment period ended December 11, 2022. There was no comment supporting this legislation. There was no comments opposing this legislation. There was no comments and recommendation on this legislation. Chair members of RDC, that is legislation number 0236-22, read into the record. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Tai, for reading that legislation into the record. Before I have a motion and a second, the last legislation, 0233-22, Honorable Freeland had sent in his uh, text message vote of green. That legislation vote changes from four, zero, one to five in favor, zero opposed, and chair not voting. Now, legislation 0236-22 was read into the record by uh, Mr. Tahi. Honorable members of RDC, let's have a motion and a second. Motion, Kellen. Honorable Gay, thank you very much. Second by. Stewart. Second. Honorable Stewart, thank you very much. And I'm, I, honorable members of RDC, this legislation moves on to law and order, budget and finance, and the etiquette committees, and the Navajo Nation Council has final authority. Are there any comments or questions on the legislation? Going twice. Going three times, Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? Chairman, I vote green. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Vice Chair Walker. Honorable Gay? Yeah, I'll vote green. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Begay. Honorable Daniels? Honorable Mark Freeland votes green according to his text message. Honorable Stewart. Green, Chairman. Honorable Stewart votes green. Honorable Daniels also sent in his text vote as green. We have a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Motion carries on legislation 0236-22. Okay, Honorable Chair Eugenia Charles Noon. Thank you, Chair Naz and RDC Committee. So next, D, legislation 0237-22. Uh, Shanella, Honorable Carl Slater, are you on the call, sir? Honorable Vice Chair Shanella. Carl Slater, are you on the call? The chairman? Well, yes. I just texted Mr. Slater, letting him know that his legislation is up. 
I don't see him on the call. Okay, I did text him also about uh, five minutes ago. Next legislation will be E0238-22, Honorable Eugene So. Are you still on the call with us? Oh, I got all future class. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 Mr. Ty, could you read this into the record, please? Hey, Chair, members of RDC, you have summary sheet for tracking number 02388-22, date December 6, 2022, an action relating to the resource and development, budget and finance and advocate committees and the Navajo Nation Council, approving $1,875,231 from the unreserved undesignated fund balance, UUFB, to replenish the 110 chapters emergency fund accounts, waiving 12 NNC section 8200. Purpose of this legislation is to approve $1,875,231 from the UUFB to replenish all 110 chapters emergency fund accounts, waiving 12 NNC section 8200. Navajo Nation Council has final authority over this legislation, which we read into the record in its entirety. The primary sponsor of this legislation is Honorable Eugene So, co-sponsored by Honorable Daniel Eso. For tracking number 0238-22, an action relating to resource and development, budget and finance, and advocate committees, and to the nomination council approving 1,875,231 from the unreserved undesignated fund balance, UUFB, to replenish the 110 chapter of emergency fund accounts, waiving 12 NNC section 8200. And section one outlines the authority in section two, the findings, which references exhibit A, exhibit B, exhibit C, exhibit D, and exhibit E. In section three, it references exhibit B. In section four is a savings date. In section five is a savings clause. It attaches exhibit A, which is the Navajo Nation Supplementary Fund proposed summary in the amount of 1875000 Two thirty and sixty four cents. It taxes exhibit B, which is the wind system balance as of six thirty twenty twenty two. It taxes exhibit C, which is an Alpha Nation program budget summary for business unit ten eighty fourteen that through ten eighty one twenty three. Navajo Nation chapter emergency replenishment fund. Attached to the exhibit D, which is a memorandum to 2NNC section 164 reviewers from Robert Woolley, account manager, date September 2nd, 2022. Subject is UUFB in, in chapters emergency fund. Attached to the exhibit E, which is a memorandum to Navajo Nation 164 review from Dominic Biall, Executive Director, Office of Budget of Management and Budget, dated December 1st, 2022, subject review of 164 document number 019704, Division of Community Development for 110 chap Navajo Nation chapters emergency fund in the amount of 1875234 from UUFB. Then you have the first report, the Navajo Nation Legislative Branch and a Public Review Summary for Legislation Number 0238-22, sponsors Honorable Eugene So. This legislation was posted on December 6th, 2022 at 5.01 p.m. The five-day comment period ended December 11th, 2022. There was one comment supporting this legislation, no comments opposing this legislation, and two comments and recommendation on this legislation. The first comment supporting this legislation is by Stephanie Silversmith. The two comments and recommendation on this legislation is by Felicia Singer and Aaron F. City. Then you have a resolution um, of the Gadapato chapter of the Navajo Nation. Resolution number ICH6707-22 
reaffirming Yanapito chapter's request to replenish and provide full allocation of the emergency fund account to address necessary protection of public health and certain public safety and well-being to provide economic stability for the Yanapito chapter community by ensuring that the emergency fund account amount to be 27,332.83 cents. Then you have a resolution from the Yanapato chapter Navajo Nation, resolution number ICH 67-11-021-8082, strongly requesting the replenishment and full accounting funding of the Yanapato ch chapter emergency fund account to address necessary protection of public health, ensuring public safety and well-being, and providing economic stability for the Yanapato chapter community by ensuring that the threshold amount to twenty-five thousand. And chair members of RDC, that is legislation number zero two three eight dash two two, read into the record. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Tai, for reading that into the record. Honorable members of RDC, let's have a motion and a second. Chairman, I motion. Thank you, Vice Chair Walker. Chair Shell. Honorable Begay. This legislation moves on to budget and finance, Navigate Etiquette Committees, and the Navajo Nation Council has final approval. Are there any comments or questions? Going twice. Going three times. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? Chairman, I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Begay. Okay, I'll vote green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Daniels. I vote green. Thank you. And, uh, Honorable Freeland. Honorable Stewart. Green. Honorable Stewart votes green. Honorable Freeland touched in his vote as green. We have a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Turn of voting motion carries on legislation 0238 22, sponsored by our Chinley Cowboy, Eugene So. Oh, F legislation 0242-22. Honorable Vice Chair Raymond Smith, and I'll are you on the call? Yes, Chair, I'm on the call. Okay. Mr. Ty, could you read this into the record, please? Chair okay, members of RDC, you have summary sheet for tracking 0242-22 date December 7th. 2022, an action relating to resource and development and budget finance committee approving a change to CAP-35-18 by real allocating leftover funds from the Nut Hills Shopping Center project to new projects in the Hawk, Lupton, and Clagato chapter. Purpose of this legislation is to reallocate 617991 and 22 cents in fund left over from the Nut Hill Shopping Center project to other projects in Hulk, Lupton, and Clagato chapter. Budget and Finance has final authority over this legislation, which we read into the record in its entirety. The primary sponsor of this legislation is Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. For tracking number 0242-22, an action relating to resource and development and budget and finance committee approving a change to CAP. Dash 35 dash 18 by real accounting leftover funds from the Nut Till Shopping Center project to the new projects in Hulk, Lupton, and Clagato chapter. In section one, outlines the authority. In section two, the finding which references in exhibit one, exhibit two. In section three, is approved to change to CAP 35 dash 18. In section four, is the effective date. In section five, is the savings clause. Attaches Exhibit 1, which is the Sista Sun Fund Power Line and Chapter Pro cap Chapter Capital Project Expenditure Plan. 
attaches exhibit two, which is the capital project management department, CISA Sun Fund project amendment certification for CAP-35-18. Then you have the first report, the Navajo Nation Legislative Branch and a Public Review Summary for Legislation Number 0242-22, sponsors Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. This legislation was posted on December 7th, 2022 at 8, 5.48 p.m. The five-day comment period ended December 12th, 2022. You had 10 comments supporting this legislation, two comments opposing this legislation, and three comments and recommendation on this legislation. The 10 comments supporting this legislation is Yvonne Murphy, Fred Foot Racer, Donna Gilchrist, Leon Jackson, and James Watchman Jr., Louis Watts, Ronald Dot, Eleanor Shirley, Laura Lee Gazi, and James, ben James Begay. Opposing this legislation was not the Ill Commission. Um, governance and um, Hamas Horson, and yet the three recommendations and comments on this legislation was Barra, was Daryl Hassin, Shirley Yazi, and Ernest Hubble. The resolution for Net Out Government Commission governments for resolution in the DCG 2022 12 128 reads as Net Out Commission governance is strongly opposing nomination council's legislation 0242 22, sponsored by Delegate Raymond Smith, an action relating to the Resource and Development Budget Finance Committee approving a change to CAP 35 18 by relocating leftover funds from the Net Out Shopping Center project to new projects in the Hulk, Lupton, and Clagato chapter. With a vote of three in favor, zero opposed, and one abstaining. This legislature, chair members of RDC, that is legislation number 0242 22, read into the record. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tahi. Honorable members of RDC, let's have a motion and a second. Chairman, I'll motion. Thank you, Honorable Vice Chair Walker. Second by. Stewart, Chairman. Hello. Honorable Stewart. Thank you very much. Honorable members of RDC, do you have any comments or questions? On twice. On three times, we'll have a roll call vote. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? Chair, I vote green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Begay. Chairman Galbert, green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Daniels. I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Freeland. Honorable Stewart. Chairman Green. Honorable Stewart votes Green. Honorable Freeland. We have a vote of four in favor, zero opposed. Turn out voting. Motion carries for legislation 0242-22. Okay, I should say, Honorable Raymond Smith, Jr. Nadoshi Chief, RDC members of the uh, Naval Nation Council here. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Okay, next legislation, we're on G under new business, 0244-22. Sponsor, Tetsila. Honorable Chairman Jimmy Henio, are you still on the call, sir? Oh, I'm here, Chairman Nielsen now. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tai. Could you read this into the record, sir? Uh, Chair, members of RDC, you have summary sheet for tracking number 0244-22, date December 8, 2022, titled the resolution, an action relating to resource and development, endorsing the plan of operation for the Western Navajo Agency Council. Purpose, this resolution, if approved, will provide... Be, be endorsing the plan of operation for the Western Navajo Agency Council. 
RDC has final authority over this legislation, which be read into the record in its entirety. The primary sponsor of this legislation is Honorable Jamie Henu, co-sponsor by Carl R. Slater for legislation number 0244-22, an action relating to resource and development, endorsing the plan of operation of the Western Navajo Agency Council, be enacted section one authority. A, the Resource and Development Committee was established as a standing committee of the Navajo Nation Council, 2NNC Section 500A. B, pursuant to 2NNC Section 500C, the Resource and Development Committee shall exercise oversight over water, land, grazing, environmental protection, cultural resources, agriculture, livestock, wildlife, roads, transportation, air transportation, communication, and utilities, information technology, chapter activities, economic and community development, commercial and trade, gaming, right-of-way, minerals, public utilities, telecommunication, and housing. C, pursuant to 226NNC section 103D4, the Western Navajo Agency Council comprised of 18 certified Navajo Nation chapters agreed to address and undertake Common goals and interests for the benefit of the Western Navajo Agency Chapter. Section 2 Findings. The Western Navajo Agency Council is comprised of duly elected chapter officials comprising 18 certified chapters of the Navajo Nation with authority to advocate, promote, and support common goals and interests of the prospective chapters. The Navajo Nation certified chapters within the Western Navajo Agencies are as follows. One, Bird Spring, Sehtito, two, Badaway Gap, three, Cameron, four, Chispilto, five, Coal Mine Canyon, six, Copper Mine, seven, Dermahotso, eight, Cogwito, Cabito, nine, Kienta, ten, Lachi, eleven, Loop, twelve, Natsis An, 13, Ojeto, 14, Shanto, 15, Tolani Lake, 16, Nohnesiz, 17, Tolani, 18, Zepekin. B, the Western Navajo Agency Council at a duly called meeting at Sestis on Community School, Navajo Mountain, Navajo Nation, Arizona, approved their plan of operation schedule here to as Exhibit A and request approval by the Resource and Development Committee of the Navajo Nation Council. C, the Navajo Nation Local Governments Act, LGA 26 in NC Section 1 was enacted for the purpose of recognizing governments at the local level. The LGA provides for a certified chapter, 2 in 26 in NC Section 102. After a certified chapter, the chapter may exercise limit listed powers. 26 in NC section 103D4. The listed authorities include entered into agreements with other chapters, entered into intergovernmental agreements, and entered into contracts with the Navajo Nation. 26 in NC section 103D, the resource and development endorses of an agency council does not alter LGA purpose certification requirements of authorities. Section three endorsement. The resource and development committee hereby endorses the establishment of the Western Navajo Agency Council that is comprised of 18 Navajo Nation certified chapters to advocate for, encourage, and promote community project support and interact with other local governments and further describe in the plan of operation attached here to as exhibit A. Section four. Conformance with Local Government Act. The endorsement of the plan of operation of the Western Navajo Agency Council does not waive the purpose requirement authorities of the Local Government Act. 26 in NC Section 1. Attaches Exhibit A, which is a resolution of the Western Navajo Agency Council Resolution Number WNAC 18-03-OBA. Entitled Western Navajo Agency Council requests and or affirms approving the plan of operation for the Western Navajo Agency Council and recommends approval for of the Resource and Development Committee of the 23rd Navajo Nation Council. Then you have the first report, the Navajo Nation Legislative 
Internet Public Review Summary for Legislation Number 0244-22, Sponsors Honorable Jamie Henu. This legislation was posted on December 8th, 2022 at 7.10 p.m. The five-day comment period ended December 13th, 2022. There was no comment supporting this legislation. There was no comment opposing this legislation. There was no comment or recommendation on this legislation. Chair members of RDC, that is Legislation Number 02. 44-22 read right into the record. Back to you, Chairman. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tahi, for reading this into the record. Um, Shanand, uh, let's establish a motion and a second first. Chairman, before a motion, I'd like to do green before the last vote. Get our motion. Um, who's this? Freeland. Uh, what, what, could you restate that? I think I missed a vote, Chairman. My call dropped. Okay. Okay. For the I want to vote green. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Shanta. And I'll on, legis on legislation 0242-22, sponsored by Honorable Vice Chair Raymond Smith. Honorable Freeland didn't vote. Now he is voting before we make a motion. So he voted green. That changes the vote to five in favor, zero opposed. Turn out voting on legislation 0242-22. Legislation 0244-22 was read into the record by Mr. Tahi. And we, right now we would like to have a motion and a second. Chairman, I motion. Um, Mr. Walker. Thank you. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, is there a second? Uh, somebody needs to mute their phone. Please mute your phone. Please mute your phone. Thank you. Second, Daniel. Is there Honorable Daniels, seconds to this legislation? Shanandana Finnegy. This legislation as an amendment and was sent out by Ms. Kahn. So first of all, I would like to ask you, do you have any comments or questions? I hear none. So we'll go ahead and uh, Mr. Tahi, could you read the amendment one into the record, please? The chair members of RDC, we have amendment legislation for 0244-22. One, page two of three, line 11, correct the spelling compromise, compromise as follows. Six, compromise. Two, page two of three, line 12, correct the spelling of Denahotso as follows. Seven, Denahotso. Three, the Office of Legislative Services and Office of Legislative Council are hereby authorized to make technical edits to this legislation and an exhibit to implement the Standing Committee's intent in approving this legislation. Chair members of RDC, that is let Amendment Number One read right into the record for legislation 0244-22. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tahi. Honorable members of RDC, let's have a motion and a second for Amendment 1. Motion, Daniel. Honorable Daniels, thank you. Second by. I'll second that. Thank you, Honorable Vice Chair Walker. Honorable members of RDC, do you have any comments or questions on Amendment 1? Uh, Chairman Thomas Walker. Uh, yes, Honorable Vice Chair Walker, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Chair, the committee members and staff, and then our um, Legislative Council, Shumayaja. They typos, again, like misspellings and grammatical errors, again, are they automatically corrected? Uh, they heading, again. Uh, endorsing the Kage or probably needs to be corrected, endorsing the word endorsing and the uh, heading. So that's a minor um, uh, error. It automatically corrected. 
or does the committee <clears throat> go uh, make the corrections by acting on it? Thank you, Chair. Mr. Tahi. The chair members of RDC, on the proposed summary sheet, the spelling of endorsement is correct. However, the the spelling of endorse, endorsing is incorrect on the legislation. This is a technical error that we can fix. It's just a misspelling of the word. But I would prefer that Ms. Khan answer this um, question directly as this is something that was read into the record. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you. Ms. Kong, your response. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is Mariana Kong, and I agree with um, what Mr. Tahi has said. It is helpful to get it on the record that there is a misspelling. Sometimes these legislation, um, we, we miss uh, misspellings, and then when we do get it on the record, we can take care of it without a formal amendment. Um, when we have enough time, uh, it does it, it it is helpful to make a um, uh, a formal amendment like we did on the the spelling of the two words, and that helps us when when the legislation is completely um, is completed and and is ready for your signature, Mr. Chair. We, we want to make sure it is as all misspellings are brought to the attention of the person doing the final engrossment. I do believe that the word, this misspelling of the word endorsing and endorsement has been taken care of by being read into the record at this time. Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Kahn. Any other comments or questions? Honorable Walker, Vice Chair Walker, do you have a follow up? Chairman, I, I don't. No, I don't. Okay, thank you. Honorable members of RDC. Any other comments or questions on the amendment? I hear none. We'll go ahead and do a roll call vote. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Keal and Begay Jr. votes green according to his text message on amendment one. Honorable Daniels? Green. Honorable Daniels votes green. Honorable Freeland? I vote Green Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Freeland. Honorable Stewart. Green Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Stewart. We have a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Motion carries on Amendment 1. Back to the main motion, Shananta. Any comments or questions? RDC has final authority over this. Going twice. On three times, we'll go ahead and vote on it. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? Green, Chairman. I vote green. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Vice Chair Walker. Honorable Begay votes green according to his text message. Honorable Daniels? Green. Honorable Daniels votes green. Honorable Freeland votes green according to his text message that just came in. Honorable Stewart. Green Chairman. Honorable Stewart votes green. We have a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. They're not voting. Motion carries on legislation 0244-22. Thank you. Okay. Um, Honorable Chairman Henio. Uh, the Resource Development Committee on behalf of Western Navajo Agency. Thank you. Chairman Henio, just hang on. <laughs> Legislation 0241-22. Honorable Henio also is the sponsor of this legislation. So, uh, Mr. Tai, could you read this into the record also? 
The chair members of RDC, you have legislation summary sheet for tracking number 0241-22, date September 6th, 2022, title of the resolution and action relating to the resource and development and navigate committees and the Navajo Nation Council approving the purchase of the property known as the Chaves Ranch, consisting of 6,349 acres, more or less located near Tohajale, Navajo Nation, waiving 16 NNC sections, three through five RDCO-78-16 and the Navajo Nation Land Acquisition Rules and Regulations approving the expenditure of the Navajo Nation Land Acquisition Trust Fund for the purchase of the Chase Ranch property. Purpose, this legislation if approved would authorize the purpose of the Chase Ranch property for 19 million plus closing costs and purchases expenses for the Land Acquisition Trust Fund. Now, the Nation Council has final authority over this legislation, which be read into the record in its entirety. The primary sponsor of this legislation is Honorable Jamie Henya, co-sponsored by Honorable Pernell Holona. For tracking number 0241-22, an action relating to resource and development and navigate committees and the Navajo Nation Council approving the purchase of property known as the Chaves Ranch, consisting of 6,349 acres more or less allocated near Tohajla Navajo Nation, waiving 16 NNC sec subsections. 3 through 5 RDCO-78-16, the Navajo Nation Land Acquisition Rules and Regulations, approving the expenditure of the Navajo Nation Land Acquisition Trust Fund for the purchase of the Chase Rent property. Section 1 lists the authority, which references Exhibit A and Exhibit B. And Section 2, the finding, which references Exhibit A, Exhibit C, Exhibit B. D, in Section 3's waiving of certain provisions of the Navajo Nation Acquisition for the Land Act and the Navajo Nation Land Acquisition Rules and Regulations, which references Exhibit A and Exhibit B. In Section 4 is the proper, Real Property Acquisitions Approval, which references Exhibit C in the amount of $19 million. In Section 5 is the approval of the expenditure of the principal and income of the Navajo Land Acquisition Trust Fund. In Section 6, the Directive to Division of Natural Resources, Division Director, and the Navajo Nation Land Department, Department Director, attaches Exhibit A, which is a resolution of the Navajo Nation Council, the 23rd Navajo Nation Council, second year, 2016, resolution number CAU-44-616. Exhibit B, attaches Exhibit B, resolution of the Resource and Development Committee of the 23rd Navajo Nation Council, second year of 2016, resolution RDCO-78-16. Attaches Exhibit C, which is the Chaves Ranch, Offering memorandum attaches exhibit D, which is the memorandum, memorandum to Ms. Dana Barbaroff, Chief Legislative Counsel from Robert Woolley, Account Manager, Office of the Controller, dated December 6, 2022, regarding the Land Acquisition Trust Fund. Then you have the first report, the Navajo Nation Legislative Branch and Public Review Summary for legislation number 0241-22, sponsors Honorable Jamie Hanyu. This legislation was posted on December 7th, 2022 at 5.44 p.m. The five-day common period ended December 12th, 2022. There was one comment supporting this legislation, one comment opposing this legislation, and two comments and recommendation on this legislation. The first comment supporting this legislation was... Jimmy R. Sinerto. The first comment opposing this legislation was Tyson Yazi. Then the two comments and recommendation on this legislation is Bitta Becker and Larry Rogers. The recommendation from Bitta Becker is a letter dated December 12th, 2022. It's comments on the legislation um, number 0241-22, purchase of the Chase Ranch in Bernalillo County, New Mexico. Then you have Larry Roger's comments and proposal, which was emailed on Friday, December 9th, 2022 at 10, 12 a.m. Chair members of RDC, that is legislation number 0241-22, right into the record. Back to you, Chairman.
Thank you, Mr. Tahi, for reading the legislation into the record. Honorable members of RDC, let's have a motion and a second. Freeland. Honorable Freeland, thank you. Is there a second? Stewart. Honorable Stewart, thank you. Honorable members of RDC, this legislation moves on to Navigate and the Navajo Nation Council has final authority. Are there any comments or questions? On twice. Mr. Chair, this is Daniels. Uh, I have a question, but I can wait until Navigate or Council. Thank you. Okay, so you'll wait till Navigat and Council. Yes. Okay, that's Christina. Okay, going three times, we'll go ahead and put it to a vote. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote, sir? Here, I will agree. Thank you. Honorable Begay, send 10 his text message as green. Honorable Daniels. Green. Thank you. Honorable Freeland. I vote green, Chairman. Thank you. Honorable Stewart. Green, Chairman. Thank you. We have a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Motion carries for legislation 0241-22. Thank you, Chairman Henio. Resource Development Committee on the Skago Kia. I could also show uh, next legislation 0237-22 under new business D. We have Shanella Honorable Vice Chair Slater on the call with us today. So Mr. Tahi, if you would read this into the record, please. The chair members of RDC, you have tracking number 0237-22 date December 2nd, 2022. Title of the resolution, proposed standing committee resolution, an action relating to resource and development committee, approving the plan of operation for the Navajo Nation broadband office within the office of the president and vice president. Purpose. The purpose of this legislation is to approve the plan of operation for the Navajo Nation broadband office within the office of the president and vice president. The primary sponsor of this legislation is Honorable Carl R. Slater. Co-sponsor is Honorable Otto So for tracking number 0237-22, an action relating to resource and development committee approving the plan of operation for the Navajo Nation broadband office within the office of the president and vice president. B, enacted section one authority. A, the resource and development committee is established as a Navajo Nation council standing committee with oversight for the land communications and utilities to establish Navajo Nation policy with respect to the optimum utilization of all Navajo Nation resources and to protect the rights, interests, sacred sites, and freedoms of the Navajo Nation and people to such resources now and for future generations. 2 NNC section 500A, 2 NNC section 500C2. Section 2, findings. The purpose of this legislation is to approve a plan of operation for the Navajo Nation Broadband Office attached to Exhibit A. B, pursuant to the Navajo Nation Broadband Office plan of operation attached as Exhibit A, the Navajo Nation Broadband Office purposes are 1. Assist in efforts to provide Navajo Nation residents with access to affordable high-speed broadband connectivity. Two, centralize and streamline the plan of broadband infrastructure projects and deployment on the Navajo Nation. Three, 
represent the Navajo Nation's government best interest in negotiating with developers seeking to provide broadband service on the Navajo Nation, four, coordinate all broadband infrastructure projects on the Navajo Nation, five, facilitate the Navajo Nation's control over its broadband goals and objectives by coordinating the Navajo Nation's Telecommunications Regulatory Commission on regula regulating the broadband resources and assist of the Navajo Nation, six, develop and maintain a central repository of information, including but not limited to maps, access point, connection speed, right of way, and leasing connection rates for all existing and future broadband infrastructure projects on the Navajo Nation, seven, develop a comprehensive strategy broadband plan for the Navajo Nation and work with the Navajo Nation and outside vendors to achieve broadband initiatives, eight, develop proposed laws, regulation, policies, and procedures for approval by the appropriate Navajo Nation Standing Committee, Navajo Nation Council, and or other Navajo Nation regulatory authority that will govern how the office will manage and oversee current and future broadband infrastructure projects and solicit, review, evaluate, and recommend approval for future broadband infrastructure projects. Nine, provide information and advertisement to the Navajo Nation Standing Committee, Navajo Nation Council, and or Navajo Nation Regulatory Authority on how best to connect Navajo communities with the fastest possible broadband connectivity at affordable costs. 10, actively seek funding for broadband infrastructure projects on the Navajo Nation and serve as a sole conduit of information regarding funds for broadband infrastructure projects on the Navajo Nation. 11, actively seek E-rates funding and administer E-rates projects for on behalf of the Navajo Nation. 12, may serve as a co-design co-designee on grants for the development of a broadband infrastructure project on the Navajo Nation by entities within owned and or controlled by the Navajo Nation government. C. The executive official review form is attached as exhibit B. Section three, approving the plan of operation for the Navajo Nation Broadband Office within the Office of the President and Vice President. The Research and Development Committee hereby approves the plan of operation for the Navajo Nation Broadband Office within the Office of the President and Vice President attached as exhibit A. Attached as exhibit A, which is the Navajo Nation Broadband Office the plan of operation. And attaches exhibit B, document number 018989, date issue 11, 7 11 22, which is the executive official review. Then you have the first report, the Navajo Nation Legislative Branch and the Public Review Summary for 0237-22. Sponsors Honorable Carl R. Slater. This legislation was posted on December 6, 2022 at 5.58 p.m. The five-day comment period ended December 11, 2022. There was no comment supporting this legislation, no comment opposing this legislation, no comments or recommendation on this legislation. Chair members of RDC, that is legislation number 0237-22 read right into the record. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tawhey. Honorable members of RDC, let's have a motion and a second. Chairman, I motion. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, thank you. Second by. Chairman Kellen. Thank you, Honorable Begay. And uh, Honorable Members of RDC, RDC has final approval over the plan of operation for the Navajo Nation Broadband Office. Do you have any comments or questions, Nandai? Uh, Chairman Kellen. Okay. Thank you. Um, Honorable Slater, could you identify your agents? And then you'll have 20 minutes to present, sir. No, can you hear me? Chair Ness? Uh, yes, we can hear you now. Thank you. Um, my agents should be Tico Charlie and Sonia Ness. Okay, thank you. You have 20 minutes. Thank you very much. Committee members, I appreciate the opportunity to present this legislation. This has been a long time coming. If you remember back in 
2021, the Navajo Nation passed the first ARPA bill that refunded a lot of the defunded CARES Act items. And a part of that were broadband projects that were consensus broadband, well, projects that Navajo Nation leadership had assigned funding to under CARES and was not able to fulfill. A complementary part of that legislation was establishing a broadband office within the Fiscal Recovery Fund ARPA office. And from there, the intentionality was that it would turn into a permanent broadband office that would coordinate the applications for grant funding. It would coordinate the development of broadband on the Navajo Nation. And it would do all of this with the goal of getting every single Navajo citizen connected to the internet at high speeds, at quality speeds, and at speeds that don't cost the consumer too much. And so with that vision, this is now presentation of the final draft and that you know, has been working for several months now and finding an opportunity to get the legislation drafted. But in essence, it creates that office, it formalizes it, and it gives it the charge from the council that you need to apply for grant funding, you need to work with the communities, you need to staff up so that we have internal expertise and we don't rely on external actors to make decisions for Navajo. And as development takes place on the nation, this office will be a coordinator or a co-applicant for those projects. And I think this is very important because we have a lot of utilities or private companies that are interested in developing broadband assets, but we haven't had one unified location within the government that's looking out for the Navajo Nation, the Navajo people first and foremost. And so to me, that's what this office will accomplish. And the idea, but to, at least from my perspective behind having it within the president's office is that it will be directly and intimately coordinated across all the relevant divisions and programs. Whereas if you kept it separate and apart within its own independent department or division, it then would not have the full force and effect, say, of the president's office to work, you know, anywhere from Navajo Nation telecommunications utilities program to the telecommunications regulatory program to the division of community development to the department of education. I know that the resources and development committee is aware of how all these different offices have different charges, whether it's at the chapter level, at the Navajo Nation government level, or um, Navajo Nation wide for regulating utilities. So that's part of the concept and the intentionality. So I ask for your affirmative consideration and I believe the agents should, should be on the line to answer any questions you may have. Shanella Chernez, we will hand it back over to you at this time. Thank you, Honorable Vice Chair Slater. Honorable Kialin Begay, you have the floor. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, it ate a big education. Uh, uh, not not develop I believe it's been over two years that I've been asking for such uh, information uh, to the the previous uh, 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 regulatory commissioner, Mr. Uh, Chris uh, Vicente, uh, because the regulatory commissioner uh, office, I mean, uh, I'll say in a nice way, but any everything that is developed under the office of the president and vice president. Yego bichina hund ah do yego, but do aler do nesiki um need lo. I think that's the best way to say it because took at lo mal no kut ah. That's a prime example. Shetan ash ah 
uh, the Ecuador, even the president himself made a statement back in May of this year that the cell tower in Little Mountain was going to be in operation by July. But we're here, we're in December, and not even, uh, I mean, the equipment continues to be just sitting there. And don't be surprised if uh, if it's if the uh, the equipment is missing one day one of these days, and I'm not sure who will be at fault in losing an equipment that's just sitting out in the open out in Low Mountain right now. So Okudat Eheki Ayopashinetats Oh yeah, and I don't know. I, mean, I really can't do much in a way, even though I probably, if, even if I voted against it, uh, which I don't want to. But the thing is, is that I don't know if the incoming administration will be different uh, in terms of uh, getting things done uh, of our community. I mean, just got there. What that? Oh, you are then the net program that then no pictures in which what that not about not the history. So again, a lot of these things lies within the executive branch. On me, a koko koto di kapaje na nishpicho na nilne koko. I mean, Halit out the Kutcher and Hot Iggy out on Nidiki, you did nicht on the even Dick had established Ilian. Another example that I want to provide is that will this office really help, such as the situation in Low Mountain? To cut it, I hate ah. A into a establish a lehent a e laya or what the nazness to Sneniki. And the reason being is that land department, another office within the executive branch, that $12,000 a year, yes, zinc into you a doesn't want to sign off to say that, yes, we'll pay $12,000 a year. What NTUA is saying is that we don't have, there's not enough people to generate revenue, not to pay for the $12,000 a year. So, NTUA, the number card a year, it a e c b yet establish a quitty lia lun but yet right now even though choice wireless is just a sub a theory of uh n t u a but yet their justification is that they don't want to establish that tower just because that uh land department is telling them that they gotta once they go into agreement that they will have to pay twelve thousand dollars a year. So even the cut established Ilya and the broadband office, Ilya don't need and they, will they truly advocate for those smaller chapters that are really in disadvantage in a way where there's more funding money that will be uh generated, will that only be their focus? Like, the net at the Tango to Peso Ator Nico Gist a ya Argist a ya with Ecos Peta in Nistor Less. And I know sell your one Ado Codod into you a and then I'm sure other companies seen with that. Eh? O Codje the net Lampeso Ator Nisigit a ya Baby Baby Bata Huin me Argit a Binet and ya. I could these smaller communities that eight or but yet at the same time, they all pay for her. What I mean, this is if 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 NTUA was dishing out their own internal uh, generated fund, then they could make a statement or position to say that uh, they can't afford to establish this tower because it's not going to generate enough uh, uh, revenue. But th- this is public funding or federal funding that's being provided to them to develop a lot of these infrastructures across the Navajo Nation. Broadband office established 
one way or another, somehow, could that be a joint uh, effort? Uh, uh, maybe within the opera office that this is established. What happens if that phases out once those opera funding has been expended? Finish So, so and then the other one, Dick at Robin Office, how will they, Dick at E rate, is one of them that they want to negotiate, though, other later in TIA, in CIA, to end the other companies of the car, which is okay, which is good. But what end is it? I don't. Into you, a base of 53 million base of Chihulia. Will the will the uh, this office be able to recapture that or H R J? Yeah, the thing is, is to hit out the code. The office key manage is it at the worst or less. Or a lot of these funds chapter reach and go to Chihulia through the opera office. I mean, through the uh, uh, allocation four point. Uh, six million per Dalits region. Will this office be able to uh, uh, start taking control of those particular uh, progress uh, planning and helping the chapter? And then the other area is first net no by is this office will be and willing to continue implement? And I know the current regulatory office is saying that IATA FirstNet is working on the Navajo Nation. That's their justification. Okay, go to Low Mountain, go to these smaller rural communities, show me that they are working there. If not, you're making false statements. So the snow, the bases, and which is the case in Low Mountain as well. The first Ninigi public safety, the other emergency cause that that the N or the that agent or her you hit the Nan Ninigi agent or be part what it that though and they're lacking those type of uh, communication. And then other Kodo Chin of Tatanada, the N. And again, I mean, there's no cell tower working, so how can we really justify to say that this is a beneficial? For our community, uh, for benefit of uh, uh, internet for our students. Not the Bayana go okay, Satikodo, or not this non is instance. Call Hagila has honored late, I think that our I mean, who's really just benefiting? And some of these smaller communities are being left out or not being discussed sincerely. So, yeah, go to the house. I'm Mr. Presenti, that the yard or other stand up at them. And then also, as you know, that I've been working and coordinating some uh, meetings with all the uh, county officials that lie within the Navajo Nation. Again, as of today, not much effort was done. In uh, as far as assistance from the president's office or the regulatory office at them. So, not much was involved or not much was uh, uh, a call Halet Ela, a Kodist A and Ni Eliado established Eliago Gorstik at Punahot Edo, it's the end of the Dost A and Ni, last the Nahot Dick at Low Mountain, the Dishinikis, Satos Nishish, Slaitza Dosh, a Quacky Gish, the Nightish Kito, a Quacky A, um, uh, uh, but Nightish Kito, the Slash is not Ash. Although the other one is that through the uh, opera office, the 120 million broadband could all base above, as you know, that 10 million 
A specifically for smart highway for 191. No, it's Inner uh, state and even federal. Last week, travel and tour budget council sato hota bahata hi si zi kado based on liniki based on BIA based on aaj bicho hunda ihi ki kado broadband. These are important. No, the ya date kyo halit ah ihi kado Navajo Nation the la edit on his kado aaj la edit na ko aget filing si do leasing si da bina chayo sa da kuson bina ihi kado cell towers, less smaller communities or do 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 yat and do do a establish that that deed uh cell tower just no other baha see I'm sure I make my probably my interpretation that was uh uh airing out my our dirty laundry in at the uh Washington level. But nonetheless that is the truth though out uh to A C Bain has uh so been uh ato nidi kiti cut the, the plan of operation be specific that these are the areas that will be addressed within this plan of operation, specifically uh, the state level, specifically for the federal level, specifically with the uh, county level. Um, as a citizen like the state of uh, Arizona, state of New Mexico, state of Utah, so in the state level, the Tata de Kao, usually there's a lack of uh, representation uh, from the uh, uh, executive branch. If it's going to be under the uh, president's office, so I guess my uh, reason of what I've been involved with in this broadband situation, but yet, I mean, we just established certain programs or established a new uh, area, and then at the same time, then later on, so even no, but Naik at Oshin, you could only be one for Ansa Yanana Ka Aj, Corbin hit the Jizdob and hit Yat hit Dob and in a deed RA and on the Sindinigi Sat and hits Aj Hotadia. I mean, that I know that was one main reason that I was I kept hearing at Low Mountain Ditos and later Dotti Dotos in Lada, Dick at Cell Tower to know. Confirmation store Edit <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Begay. Honorable Slater, your response, you and your agents. Thank you very much. And thank you, Fash, for the comments and the questions. I think I share a lot of the frustration that you have in connecting our smaller chapters or pockets that don't have very good service um, within our chapters. And while I cannot guarantee that Low Mountain is going to tomorrow get a cell tower if this legislation passes, because that seems a little bit too much like a quid pro quo, I can say that if you look at page two of three in the legislation, 
there are a few items that I think are important. So item two, well, I'll just start with one. It says assist in efforts to provide Navajo Nation residents with access to affordable high-speed broadband connectivity, centralize and streamline the planning of broadband infrastructure projects and deployment on the nation. And then if you go down to number seven and number eight, I think those are also very important develop a comprehensive strategic broadband plan for the Navajo Nation and work with the Navajo Nation and outside vendors to achieve broadband initiatives. And number eight, I believe is relevant to working with chapters and coordinating with all of our different utilities. So develop proposed laws, regulations, policies, and procedures for approval by the appropriate Navajo Nation Standing Committees, Navajo Nation Council, and or other Navajo Nation, regu Navajo Nation Regulatory Authority that will govern how the office will manage and oversee current and future broadband infrastructure projects and solicit, review, evaluate, and recommend approval of future broadband infrastructure projects. So with that said, I think this office is set up to accomplish the goals that you are seeking to affect and bring into reality. And when we look at utilities generally, there is, uh, you know, essentially a subsidy or a subsidization that uh, takes place where you have people who live in denser areas, and that could be for water or power. In general, they end up subsidizing because it costs less to provision them with the utility than people who live in more rural settings. And so when you look at the strategic development mentioned, I think it's in item seven, that's where it's important to invest those dollars in the middle mile, um, in the backbone, so that we can have a system to work off of and build off of to connect our more rural areas. We can't just immediately go straight to the rural area because it means we'll probably cut out important middle and backbone capabilities that we need to develop for a strong system across Navajo. And you know, I know that that isn't very appetizing or palatable to a lot of our people. And I hear that a lot at the local level. But what we need to do is, you know, follow what you said and what you advocated for in the ARPA process. And that is getting middle mile and backbone off of 191. Um, that's going to be, I think, an immense multiplier for connecting out to places like Low Mountain and connecting to our more rural communities that are off the main highway. So to that end, you know, this office is meant to coordinate. It's meant to develop that strategic plan. Right now, the ARPA office is working on the strategic plan for the ARPA dollars. So th these are the same you know, broadband employees who will roll over into this permanent office. And you know, that first step is taking care of what we can with the dollars that we have, the 120 million. So there's the money for the IIJA match. There's the middle and last mile that we allocated, and that's where the $191 are. And so we need to deliver those and parallel to that, start applying for other grant opportunities that are coming down the pipeline. We haven't had an entity within the Navajo Nation to apply for these opportunities in the past. What the nation has done is like you said, NTUA has been the applicant. And that to me isn't the best, say, value, right? And I don't want to knock NTUA, but the point is NTUA is going to look out for NTUA. We need a Navajo Nation government entity that's going to look out for the Navajo people and the strategic picture among all the potential utility providers. And it's my hope that in the future, the Navajo Nation owns these backbone and middle mile networks, these towers, et cetera, and that they can lease them to different marketers and providers of the service. And you know, we had an opportunity to do that under ARPA, but you know, there's just so many different needs. And in the end, the council decided to only allocate 120 million to broadband. So you know, it's a decision that leadership has made. And the next logical step in building out our, um, our capabilities is formalizing this office. And so that's really what this 
legislation does. It's not to immediately provide uh, a tower in every community. It's to provide strategic direction, to provide an entity and a fiscal agent that can work on behalf of our people and on behalf of the government, and to build up our internal capacity within the nation to and that expertise to really uh, bring into effect that that strategic vision. So, you know, that's what I see as this broadband office. That's what I see it doing. And I think that um, with council support, we'll be able to mold it because as you saw, the policies and the procedures, you know, anything that's relevant in how they're going to coordinate with chapters or other utilities, I think generally speaking, a lot of that's going to have to come back to this committee. And this committee is going to be the place where uh, you can impose that. You can say you need to do X with the chapters. You need to make sure that you're coordinating at the agency level with the chapters. Um, you need to show how, okay, yes, if you're investing in the middle mile and the backbone, how are you also getting that last mile? And to me, you know, there has to be balance. It, it can't all be weighted in one direction or the other. But I you know, dream of a day when we have that strategic broadband plan for the entire Navajo Nation. And in the absence of an office, we're never going to have that strategic plan. And um, you know, I, I can't speak for your conversations with staff members in the past on the development uh, you know, and things they have with the, the previous director, et cetera. Um, all I know is that this is something that's important to me that I've been working on and trying to support legislatively and otherwise. And uh, that's why I'm trying to sponsor this legislation. So, um, Shanela Chernez, uh, I'll hand it back over to you. Okay, uh, thank you. Annabelle Begay, do you have a follow up question? Uh, Chairman, um, yeah, I mean, th uh, those are the issue I know that we'll be and I'll be dealing with uh, or proceed uh, when this particular office is established. Again, the other area that Kodo mentioned Iliaki, uh, any, um, uh, when he, he talked about the uh, Kodo, um, to be the uh, co sponsor uh, of the uh, the other thing, what we try to do at time, opera, opera funding, I mean, what's the purpose of certified chapters, but still yet they go through this process of getting it through the process again. Why, I mean, why can't we allow a uh, similar uh, statement in the, in here to say that uh, these certified chapters can freely um, uh, work with uh, entities uh, broadband. Um, and I think that's the reason why um, the Office of Land Department is really standing on the positions of having uh, a fee to be paid uh, for, for, for uh, internal um, funding uh, because there are uh, an entity uh, outside companies but our NTUA, they're non-profit but still yet uh, the subsidiary, I uh, think they're in the profit uh, position. So, going back to um, uh, certified chapters, um, will they uh, 
have another obstacle to get their uh, community uh, uh, to work directly with the uh, community, uh, I mean, to the uh, direct work directly with the uh, like the phone companies or cell companies. How will that be incorporated? A lot of times that these certified chapters have to be mixed back in with the remainder of the non-certified chapters of the progress locally on projects or program or projects that they uh, uh, deal with, even uh, spending the grant funding. They still have to go through the Navajo Nation Council for NABI to get support for that uh, need. Um, uh, some companies or programs at the federal level states that they look at the Navajo Nation as one, and they don't look at or recognize a lot of these uh, certified chapters that they're able and willing to work as their uh, 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 incorporated uh, communities in any state uh, of a state hot asa to to be ba ko hin sino ben na e ko do na bu nation ta sa git en hat long hot ai ko do ben hit yat ke to hot ai ko do ben o ko yu je ko do a lot of time our chapter just gives up to say that i mean we can't go even go through the navu nation to get support they're saying that dit a dit a in da do dit a ko te ye ko do a na nation den gi I mean, it has to go through, it has to be reviewed by the opera office, it has to be reviewed by the Department of Justice, and then, I mean, who am I to say that, yeah, other delegates, uh, legislation is for me to say yes or no. It shouldn't be for me to say yes or no, it should be the people, they've already voted on it. So, we're going through this whole process chairman i mean I, I, let me let me just make that as a statement a comment i'll support the legislation uh but but nonetheless those are the concerning issues that i'm dealing with but yet i mean this is one thing that uh has been developed and which uh i can just want to, i want to be on record to say that and i believe i have a statement and that I can share, I should have uh, added on as a, uh, a public comment, uh, uh, say, stating that this all along I have been asking for this, uh, but yet, uh, 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 but it's been a long time that I've been asking that there should be an as in writing to the uh, uh, office, even the general service department, the division community development, and the uh, uh, division directors approach it. Can can these be established? Nobody responds. So, which I appreciate it. I'm sure you have a, a uh, special touch or something to uh, make this happen. So I appreciate the committee for affording uh, this, uh, uh, presenting this legislation. Uh, Chairman, I'll uh, not sit on it. Thank you very much, Honorable Begay. I know you have been, I've spent a lot of time advocating on behalf of cell towers in your communities and throughout the Navajo Nation. Uh, including first net and all so appreciate the work that you do i don't let me go back to honorable uh, slater thank you and thank you for the the questions and the comments um with respect to let's see here the certified chapters i think that's a really important point and it it's more complicated than just this office in that when you have different grant programs some of them identify as eligible recipients subdivisions of the navajo nation or organizations designated by the navajo nation there are other types of grants that treat the nation and its people as a monolith and there's only one sort of eligible recipient and that is the nation I know that 
when Delcon Chapter prevailed in getting their, uh, I can't remember if it was IIJA, I think it was IIJA funding. Um, I think it was uh, Delegate Elmer Begay who did bring a resolution forward to ensure that they had uh, appropriate support from the council to demonstrate that this was a Navajo Nation project. Now, with these comments, I think that that's something that we need to charge the broadband office with under that provision of developing the procedures to say that certified chapters should be permitted to do as they please within their service areas as long as it conforms with Navajo Nation law. And while that is important, I will mention that in the development of the ARPA legislation and when all the funding came down, to be frank, there are a lot of hucksters out there who just came out of the woodwork and were trying to sell really dated or soon to be dated technology to our chapters. And they didn't have a terrible amount of concern about how the assets would be managed once they were paid for and theoretically deployed within the chapter service areas. So when in this legislation, you see them being a coordinating entity and making sure that there's some standard policies and really standards for what level of service needs to be out there. I think that that will only strengthen and empower those chapters who might not have the expertise, that this will be the clearinghouse, this will be the agent that they can lean on to ensure that they get appropriate support when they are dealing directly with utilities. I think that competition is good. I think that we need to have competition in order to get the best value and the best product for our people. That comes into marketing to the individual consumers. Now, when it comes to the strategic plan across all of our chapters, across our highways, et cetera, that's where this office, I think, will shine in making sure that we get that backbone, we get that middle mile, and we strategically develop the last mile. Something we don't have right now is really a breakdown between where is it going to be more effective to deploy something akin to Starlink or Starlink itself, you know, which doesn't require anything other than electrical connection. And where is it going to be better and make sense to, you know, run fiber along the existing rights of way and get those connected to the homes? And that's where I think, you know, the office can help advise certified chapters because maybe they want to use some of their ARPA allocation to purchase internet for vulnerable citizens or families and help get that connectivity in places where there isn't presently cell service. Um, but the dollar figures alone for each chapter are not enough to do a lot of last mile work um, at scale. So, you know, I think in, in terms of the certified chapters, that is, is my response. I think that um, if you're interested in including something in this, that, you know, that could be developed via amendment or letter to the office once it's established. But I don't see anything in here that's going to add an extra step for them. If anything, I think it's gonna be one sort of technical expert that they can lean on and use when dealing with individual utilities or people who wanna set up for them a network within their communities. And I know you had a second comment and I just realized I closed um, where I had that written down. So I apologize, uh, Chair, but um, if, Delegate Begay could restate the second part of this question. I'd appreciate it. Honorable Begay. Uh, Chairman, um, I, I, again, um, like I said, uh, the, the, re the remainder of the statement were just a comment on this, oh, uh, but I'll, I'll support the uh, legislation, Chairman. Okay. Thank you, uh, Honorable Begay. Honorable members of RDC, do you have any comments or questions? On twice. On three times. We'll go ahead and do a roll call vote at this time. Honorable Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? Honorable Begay. Chairman, uh, I vote green. Thomas Walker. Thank, thank you, Honorable Vice Chair Walker. 
Honorable Begay. Uh, Chairman Kale votes green. Thank you. Honorable Daniels votes green according to his text message. Honorable Freeland. I vote green, Chairman. Yeah. Honorable Stewart. Green. Thank you. We have a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Motion carries on legislation 0237-22. Thank you, Shanala. Honorable Slater. Yeah. Thank you, RDC and Chairman. Okay. We're on number eight, close of meeting. Mr. Tahi, any other announcements? The chair members of RDC, Mr. Manuel Rico, the executive director, email the Navajo Nation Council and Office of Legislative Service indicating that this Navajo Nation Special Council meeting for scheduled for Thursday, December 15th at 2 p.m. will not occur. They did not meet the required signature um, that is required by 2NNC Section 162B. So there will be no special Navajo Nation Council session. We'll only have an, a regular Nobby special session. That's my announcement, Chair. Back to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tahi. Honorable members of RDC, we're on adjournment. Let's have a motion in a second. <clears throat> Chair, I motion. Thank you, Honorable Vice Chair Walker. Is there a second? Second motion, Freeland. Honorable Freeland, thank you. Any comments or questions? So thank you for all that you do in your service to the great Navajo Nation. We'll go ahead and do the roll call vote for adjournment. Vice Chair Walker, how do you vote? Green, Chairman, I, go, I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Begay. Uh, Kiel votes green, thank you. Thank you. Honorable Daniels. Honorable Freeland. I vote green, Chairman. Thank you. Honorable Stewart. Green. Thank you. Honorable Daniels. Green. Thank you, Honorable Daniels. We have a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Turn on voting. Motion carries. It is now 2.25 p.m. We are officially adjourned until next RDC meeting. Tomorrow's number Thank you, Chairman. Committee.